Welcome back to the Name Redacted Podcast, America's most beloved podcast, the most downloaded Red Sox podcast in the world. And I'm going to be positive. I'm going to be positive. That was a very shit loss. I'm not happy about it. I was actually saying some some naughty words, Tyler. Just oh, a few no. moments ago. Yep. I was saying all kinds of naughty words. They were super vulgar and they weren't nice. And I was saying those after the Red Sox game today because the Red Sox did lose in the series finale, uh, which is something that you go up against Shohei Otani. You know, you're not feeling terrible about losing to Shohei Otani. The Red Sox didn't lose to Shohei Otani, did they, Tyler? No, they didn't. They actually no. lucked out in the best way possible. Two innings, like anyone would say, even if it was the two shutout innings, you don't have to worry about Otani after two with the Angels bullpen. You're cooking. Yeah, didn't help that Bayo got rocked, but they had every chance to win this game. They just didn't get the job gross. done. Look gross in the first inning. Also, uh, if you're watching this on the Name Redacted YouTube channel, uh, I'm in the new studio right now, which is not done. It sounds great. Like I can already tell the difference in the sound. Fucking very happy about that because it looks like I'm on a Zoom call with like a black brick, uh, like background. But that's a real that's a real brick background. And we're gonna be like I didn't I didn't want to unveil the the new studio until it was done. It's not done yet. We're actually going to put the logos on the brick. It's going to look really sick. Uh, but there there's a man in my house right now just absolutely going to fucking town on the bathroom. I, he's not taking a shit. He's taking the tiles off the wall. Uh, so he's doing like uh, he's just fucking bashing all the tiles off the wall. So I was downstairs in the kitchen where I've been doing the podcast. Uh, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to see if the soundproofing in the new studio works. And it does, which is great. But I, I didn't want to unveil the, the new studio until I absolutely had to. But regardless, I'm in here. Um, surprise, new studio. It's going to be great. We're going to have Tyler and Jake in here as soon as it's uh, ready to go. It's not quite ready to go. The update is like I've got these mic arms. Like it's going to look sick. Like I'm on like a, it's like I bought like a dining room table. We're going to drill the mic arms into the table. It's going to have like a hub in the middle where you can like plug in. It's going to have Ethernet, uh, different lighting and shit. The logos are going to be on the walls. We're going to have cameras in here, some better lighting, all kinds of shit. Uh, so I'm excited. I'm excited for doing like having a good background for the remote shows when I do Baseball is Dead. And uh, when we do Name Redacted, we're going to try and get Tyler in here as often as the schedule will allow. But for now, this is uh, this is my first podcast in the new studio. So I'm, I'm very excited about it. Uh, I was not excited when Masataki Yoshida came up to the plate in the bottom of the ninth with a chance to win it. And by the way, my first observation about that ninth inning, that Rafael Devers RBI knock to right field, that's an out last year. Like, true. I was, it, definitely true. That was, that's an out last year. So I'm a big fan. I'm a big proponent of banning the shift. Uh, I want to see more action. I want to see more hitters rewarded for hitting the shit out of the ball. Like, if you hit the ball hard to the right side, there's three dudes standing there. It's like, like I, I, it depends on like the age gap. Like it might be more disappointing for me than it is for you because you're used to seeing the shift. But like 2004, like they're not shifting like that in 2004. Like dudes fucking like hitting a rocket into right field and then the second baseman just throws them out from shallow right field. Like that's not fun. Like I get if if you're on the 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 shifting side of things like that team, it's like, yeah, fuck yeah, we got a guy there. That's an out. Like now we're one out closer to winning this ball game. But if you're a baseball fan, Rafael Deris comes to plate in the ninth inning, hits a rocket to to the right side, and it, it gets through. Like, yeah, he's rewarded for fucking hitting a bullet. Like that, I, I I don't know where you guys land on banning the shift, but I'm a I'm a big get, like I don't know is that like an old guy take to get rid of the shift? Tyler, welcome back. We lost you for a second. Oh, okay. All right. I did so, not hear anything you said at the end. I said, is that an old guy take to? not be a fan of the shift? No, I, I think it got to a point where it was taking away from some of the athleticism in the game. Someone like we saw Trevor Story at second base, like he was incredible last year. Now you picture what he can do kind of let loose if he ends up going back to second, but we're talking more of that player. Uh, it just gives the game more focus on the best athletes we've ever seen playing the sport. And like going off the top of my head, Devers definitely has had some of those hits leak through this year. I think Reese McGuire has been another one of those guys. I feel like some of those ground balls going into right field. Uh, and I think there's one guy we were hoping to see more of that from, and that's Masataka Yoshida, who mm. obviously popped out to end the game. But, you know, we've seen it work for some guys. I think other guys, like a lot of people thought Alex Verdugo was going to be like a big beneficiary of it. 
let's be real. I, he's just hitting the ball everywhere. He, he's he just flying even, the ball. He just smokes everything, so it hasn't really mattered. But yeah, Yoshida was one of those guys I thought that would really, uh, you know, you see a lot of hits squeak through and we haven't seen that yet. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like we're going to start. We're going to start with the finale just because it's fresh. I think it's what's it, it's what's on people's minds right now. Uh, Masataka Yoshida being the final out didn't make me like, I don't know where you're at in terms of your confidence level, but can we can we call it a panic level where like, where would you put yourself if you're making it one to ten? Are you I'm not panicked. I'm not panicked. I'm more just like, all right, like, let's see it. Like, I know he's capable. Like, it's not like I'm not my mindset is not. Ooh, this guy might not be as advertised. I'm not there. But I'm more just like, where's the dude that led the World Baseball Classic in RBI? Where's that guy? Um, because it's not like he was facing slapdicks in the World Baseball Classic. Like the guy can hit, but we just haven't seen it. And he missed what four games with the hamstring? Yep, four games with the hamstring. Comes back, and uh, I made this point on Baseball Is Dead about how they were hyping up the Otani Yoshida matchup, and I was like, I, yeah, I'm sorry, I just don't feel it. Like if 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 Yoshida was having the start to the season that a guy like Verdugo is having or a guy like Devers is having, then you're like, OK, all right, we've we've got like Shohei Otani and his half a run ERA versus Masataki Yoshida. They were just teammates on the World Baseball Classic team. But Yoshida's OPS has got to be in like the low 600s, right? I actually have it in front of me. He's uh, slashing 186, 340 OBP and the OPS is 619. So, yeah, nailed that. Uh, but the OBP is great. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, that's, that's as advertised. He was supposed to get on base a lot. He's getting on base a lot. Yeah, we've seen. He can work a walk like that's still in there. And, you know, mentioning the guy that we saw in the WBC from Yoshida, one of the guys he hit best was Patrick Sandoval, who's on that Angels team. You, you faced him already this series, and Yoshida wasn't healthy for that. But I think with Yoshida, it's clear this adjustment period that we had all these conversations about, like, April is going to be a month where he has to, you know, maybe change how he approaches the entire game just from a hitting standpoint. Well, the Red Sox are starting to shift his hands a little bit. Core talked about it post game saying, look at some of the follow balls he hit today. He's going oppo. So it looks like they're starting to see it and say all those balls you're rolling over, going to second base constantly. We need less of that. You need to start shooting the ball the other way. That's what we really want to see out of you and how long it takes those adjustments to kind of fall into place. We'll see. but. Clearly, he's kind of going through it on top of it. The layoff, like a couple of days, Merloni was very heavy on the broadcast about that. He kind of had to just get back into it and figure it out. Can't be easy when you're facing guys you haven't ever faced before. So he has a lot of things working against him right now. So that's why I'm not panicking. I say there's just some orange flags, not red flags, but orange flags between the launch angle. Um, you know, the top percentage, the things we talked about a podcast ago where yeah, he, he's not. He needs to start lifting the ball a little bit more and he needs to kind of maybe stay away from pulling the ball as much as well. Thank you. Thank you for saying that, because my next point was going to be a lot of these guys are pitching him away, away, away. And if you're trying to pull those balls, you're going to roll them over. And the green monster is your friend, Masa. Please, by all means, it should be your that, best friend, should be your best friend. Like if you're if 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 the issue is that you're hitting balls in the ground, you're you're a little bit too pull happy. You're at Fenway Park, dude. If they're pitching you up or if they're pitching you away, they're giving you a double <laughs> like with your pop. And, and I know that we haven't seen it yet in big league games, at least to start the regular season. But in spring training, those balls were carrying like even the outs. They were loud outs like he would have doubles, whatever. Uh, he was hitting balls to the to the base of the of the bullpen uh, in right field. And he was putting balls off the wall like he's got pop. So. If they're going to pitch Masataki Yoshida away, I, I would imagine that we're not the only people that are sitting here being like, hey, go go with those, like spray the ball the other way. Like those are those are easy, easy doubles. So I, I think, it, you know, it, it's not something where there's no panic meter for me. There is no concern over is he legit or not. It's more just becoming comfortable with being the player that they need him to be. Because right now, I think, you know, you want to stick to your game. You want to be the guy that got you there. But now you're here and you can be a guy that could even be possibly better than what we thought you were. So we'll see. 
we'll see what happens. But I don't want to spend a ton of time on Yoshida because, I, again, I'm not super worried about it. It just so happened that, you know, he was the final out. And I know for me personally, the confidence confidence level was not super high during that at bat going into it. I was like, please work a walk like that's that's not a good feeling. Like, that's not a good place to be with a guy that you gave $100 million to is please work a walk like you don't want that. So we'll get there. And that ball that Justin Turner hit to oh. deep center. Like, did they shut down Wooded Dong yet? Like, that's got to be a home run in multiple ballparks, right? It had to be. Uh, I saw, like, someone put out the map of it, and it's like, it like a 417-foot flyout to center. Absolute bomb. And you saw on Justin Turner's face after the pain. Like, mm-hmm. you know he thought he was gone off the, or off the bat as well. It's just, yeah, it was one of those days. I think Kike Hernandez with the bases loaded. Smoke that ball. It gets caught. And you kind of just throw your hands up. Sometimes the ball is going to, you know, luckily end up where it needs to go. And sometimes it's not. It's just, yeah, that whole game was blue ball. You're like you got blue balled multiple times in the ninth inning. You get blue balled. Justin Turner, you get blue balled. Uh, bases loaded right after the rain delay. Blue balled. You couldn't take advantage. So they had their shots. And, and that's why I think we're happy. We're positive. Like you won series. Alex Kors says it. You win series. You're going to be in an amazing place by the end of the year. It's just when you have a game where Cutter Crawford Balled out, absolutely balled up or balled up. Ugh, can't speak. Absolutely balled out. You want to win those games. You just, it is what it is, but we're not going to be negative. We're, it's we're not going to be negative day. It's going to be positive because the Red Sox took three out of four in the series. The Red Sox took three out of four in the series. We're going to be positive. Um, and we're also going to give some love to uh, the Dana Farber Cancer Institute. Because this MLB season, you can turn every Red Sox win into a win for the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Join me in our efforts to strike out cancer by pledging a donation to the Jimmy Fund for each Red Sox win this year. Sign up today and DraftKings will match each donation up to twenty five grand total. Every dollar makes a difference in the lives of cancer patients and their families in Boston and around the world. Visit pledgeit.org slash Jimmy Fund to make your pledge today. That is pledgeit.org slash Jimmy Fund. Uh, together, we're all Jimmy. Uh, all right. So three out of four. Did anyone pick that? I know Jake went sweep. Did you go split? I was a split. I was one out of three. I meant they were going to lose one out of three. Did you? Yes. Interesting. You've meant, you've meant a lot of things that have come out very differently from your mouth. I mean, you overall. guys... Like, I'm not saying Jake, it's more Tyler. Like, you just don't interpret words the way that they're spoken. Wrong. Are you, you're telling me my comprehension level is poor? Yes. That, that is the most, disrespect, the most disrespectful thing I think I've ever heard in my life. I meant ever. it with every ounce of disrespect that it could have been said in because I said the Red Sox were going to lose one out of three. No, you didn't. See, Jake, Jake no, did Jake, I say the Jake, Red Sox shut the were going to win Jake, no. one out of three or that they were going to lose one out of, th- out of four? Lose one out of four. You're pretty clear about yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. I was pretty clear about it. I won't and let I you do I, this. I'm not letting no, it happen. There are a lot of people on the internet that were His saying, internet hey, doesn't even work. I mean, it's because I'm in, I'm in we're like waiting. A, a, we're waiting. I'm in a soundproof studio right now. And the internet's not super great in here because we can tell. Listen, did I comprehend that correctly, Jared? Listen, that all this I means, thought. all this means is that the studio is working. Because we're going to be able to hardwire in here. We're going to be cruising once, once it's up and running. This, this is a premature launch. You know? This is like taking the baby out the womb at like six months. Can't do that. You could. But you shouldn't. Doctors wouldn't advise it. Okay. So baby's out of the womb at six months. That's not what we wanted. That's not how we drew it up. But baby's out. Baby's crying. Okay? <laughs> Nothing. I hate you. There's nothing I could do about that, dude. I wish, I wish it was ready. It's not. But it sounds great, and I'm happy about that. I digress. Um, so I said the Red Sox were only going to lose one game in the series. That's exactly what happened. They took three out of four, Tyler! They Play took it. three out of four from the Angels. Should have been a four-game sweep. Jake should have been right, not me. I shouldn't have been the guy. Jake should have been the guy. Four games in a row they should have taken from this Angels team. Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, Shohei Otani, Anthony Rendon, 
Taylor Ward, Hunter Renfro. These are all guys, Tyler. This is a good team. This I know is the a names. good Angels team. You know the names. You know the numbers. The Red Sox should have swept this series in four. Instead, it was three out of four. And we'll take it. Hey, it's a series win. And you know what that means. You know what that means, right? Ooh. You know what that means, right? Yes, I do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. I already have a name in mind. Oh, you do? Oh, I do. I'm not, I'm not going to say it. We, we got to get through the podcast first. Yeah, we got to get through the podcast because it's not, it's not exactly a slam dunk. It's not exactly uh, cut and dry, as they say. Is that a tease? I don't know. Interesting. Mm. It's a bar. You know? Yeah. Jake, do you know who you're voting for? I got a, an idea about it. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like there's going to be a couple of packets handed out as well. So, so you're really running with this that you called this series? I did, yeah. Uh, I'm very concerned about the audience. At this, point here. <laughs> what? this lying you're doing to them, it, you it's mean? not right. It's unethical, some would say. Some would say Why? very unethical. Do you, so now you're insulting the audience. You think that they're fucking idiots and that you think that I said that they were going to lose three out of four and that they I believe just, that? I know a lot of, you know, while we have a very diverse, you know, listener group, there's mm-hmm. young children that listen to the show. Yep. And, you know, as a young child, I didn't understand many things. I was quite right. confused. You still don't. Uh, debatable. You still um, don't. That's not de- well, spare Jake, me. Is that debatable? Jake, is that debatable? Jake, oh, spare on. me. Shut come up. On. Come on. Not debatable. <laughs> it's not debatable, Tyler. Come on. What are you doing? Back to the children. The children yep. that year are just <laughs> feeding lies. Children. And yep. just injecting them with this poison, this venom mm-hmm. from your mouth, honestly. Yeah. It will be remembered in the history books. By who? By many. Okay. <laughs> okay. When the dolphin people take over a hundred years from now and they're listening yeah. back to the podcast. Who are the dolphin people? That's how I assume. I think that's Wait, the group. Hold on. Who Sorry. are the dolphin people? Uh, just, you know, when you think about what's going to happen to humans at some point and you picture what the next being is. You think I see dolphin. dolphins? The dolphins, they're aquatic. They have bigger brains than us, I think. Uh-huh. Um, they can go underwater. So when yep. the water rises, right, we can't, we're not going to survive like that. Um, uh, you've it, never been on a boat before? A, bo- <laughs> a boat? <laughs> Tyler, is like, if, if, like, if the, the sea ever rose in Brockton, Tyler would just die. He wouldn't be like, how do, how do we survive? I don't know, but- dude. Build a fucking house that's higher up. Get on a boat. Boats aren't going to gonna always be there for you. you how many what boats do you think there are in Brockton, Massachusetts right now that I could easily get to in an emergency situation? What boats am I going to find here? Do you think that a tsunami is going to hit Brockton? I'm pretty sure you would have enough time to prepare if the water was slowly rising because that it's just going to be like the melting of the, the polar ice caps. Wrong. First and mistake. It, the tsunami never comes slowly. It always comes fastly. You would die in the fastly. tsunami. But you yes. would also. <laughs> what about would, it? You would also know that a tsunami is coming because you'd be able to predict or forecast the earthquake in the middle of the ocean, knowing that a tsunami would then ensue. Or is tsunamis and earthquakes, they always tie together. Has there ever been a yes. tsunami without are an earthquake? Are you fucking kidding me, dude? I, I don't know. That's what they are. It's when the tectonic plates in the earth shift and then it creates gas that releases from the, uh, the floor of the ocean and then an earthquake causes the tsunami. Besides the point, I don't know when you, you think actually... magic creates tsunamis. I, I think tsunamis are mother. How did you na- think a tsunami happened? Mother nature. Mother nature makes the decision. Right. And an sometimes it happens in the middle of the fucking ocean. That's how they are created. Some in history have said that. I, I bet mm-hmm. there's, you know, there's what been do a you lot know of tsunamis. about tectonic plates? They're on Earth. They're part of Earth. They are part of Earth. They, they move. They collide. They sometimes shift. they go over. Yep. Um, what do you call it? The, um, the ring of, uh, the ring of plates. There's a, there's a place where this is common, where there's a lot of this, where there's a lot of earthquakes. It's, I think it's called the ring of plates. There's no way there's a ring of plates. Jake, if you could research this, please, <laughs> or even... anyone listening and confirm what the ring of plates is. But I remember learning about this in uh, earth science. I, I do remember it. Jake, is there a ring of plates? I'm not even going to waste my time looking it up. <laughs> There's no way. Hold on. There's no way, dude. And that's Ring of fine. plates, earthquakes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hold on. Earthquake. Yeah. That's a big one. You're just going to uh, look at propaganda. Oh, the ring of fire. You ever heard of that? <sighs> it's a great Johnny Cash song. There you go. That's what I was talking about. 
big even earthquake same thing. Big earthquake tsunami thing. You just said the ring of plates was a thing and now it's the ring of fire. Like, could you imagine that like the difference between the word plate and fire is like if there's a plate in the kitchen, you'd be like, yeah, of course, that's where plates go. But then if you said there's a fire in the kitchen, well, now you're in trouble. So you see how the, there's a difference. I think the people who came up with this ring of fire thing are idiots, because if I said plates, you could relate the plates to the tectonic plates. Tectonic. When it, see, whatever. where you where you want to put the C. You put the C in Titanic, but you don't want to put it. <laughs> in <laughs> fuck off. Fuck off. Tectonic plates. Yeah. Fire. I would assume there was fires there all the time. Yeah. Wildfire. Wildfire. OK. All right. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, all right. We're <laughs> all right. Uh, what? What? Pull it together here. I'm. I'm fine. I'm waiting. For, I'm waiting for you to get it together. You, uh, I'm you, sorry. I just pants you like that on science, but you know we can. We I don't can get think back that that's baseball. what happened there. I don't think that's how history will look back on that. Ask the dolphin people. Okay. I can't wait for the Photoshop of Tyler as a dolphin. <laughs> That's going to be great. That's going to be great. That's going to be a new profile pic. Send them away, please. I always need a new one. They took away my verification, by the way, because I changed my profile picture. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. Yeah. There was something going on. I forget. Oh, it was when you were calling Garrett Whitlock shitlock and someone screenshotted it. Don't even. And. That someone was like, oh, where did Tyler's blue check go? I, I, didn't, I didn't ask, but I figured it was like a touchy subject, so I left it alone. But you lost your blue check, and it was because you changed your profile picture. I tried to switch it up. I had had that one for about a year now. I thought I was ready for something new. <laughs> Tyler yeah, is for the people, though. Tyler only uses like fan art, which how many, how many, <clears throat> not to start any fires here, Tyler. How many 98.5 The Sports Hub personalities have fan art of themselves, whereas Tyler Milliken has options? There's yeah. multiple f- cartoons and fan art of Tyler. He's got at the by the end of the week. What is today? Monday? Oh, my God. You have all week. Send us your submissions. If you're if you're into Photoshop, make me a Photoshop of Tyler as a dolphin, please. I would love it. And I, I want you to say- have options. The one time I did receive fan art at 98.5, it was my head on a box of Easy Mac. Why? And that I did a macaroni and cheese eating challenge on the show. Okay. Did you? And I, yeah, I had to do two boxes of mac and cheese and just put it down. Okay. I did it in twenty five minutes. There's there's not a lot of of you would think that a, like the saying eat an entire box of mac and cheese would be like oh what a fat ass but like I feel like one box of mac and cheese is like one serving size. Uh, easy. Well, no, one serving. Now, when I was a kid, I, I was raised a, as a heavy child. And my dad would make me and my sister, who was also raised as a heavy child. We were a heavy family. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad would make us two boxes of mac and cheese after school every day. Yeah. Um, and like, he didn't, he didn't say nothing to me. at school? No, we did. Okay. So was that <laughs> your dinner or was that like your... <laughs> no, this is post-school school lunch. Snack. Okay. Well, you think you go to lunch and then you have three classes after that. So you need to kind of yeah. get some yeah, fuel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, we started gaining weight. This is like a two year process, but my no dad way. didn't tell my mom. Uh-huh. And then like my mom would bring us to the doctor and they'd be like, dog, something's, something's not <laughs> right here. So there's a problem. Could you I don't imagine know. your doctor going up to your mom being like, dog, something's not right. <laughs> this kid. <laughs> well, the doctor would be very real. He'd be like, are you serious, man? <laughs> like, yeah. well, how are you getting this weight? And we, my mom found out it was the mac and cheese and she banned it from our house. She took it away. So, so do you. <laughs> Are you allowed to eat it now? Sure. Yeah. I, I don't think anyone's <laughs> stopping me. I'm an adult, but yeah. they didn't ah. believe I could do t- mm, watch it. Mm. Um, Spare me. I'll be 25 in less than a month. Okay. Uh, but your birthday? Now, May 11th. Oh, let's have a party. Millican birthday bash. Yeah, let's have a party. Jake, book uh, Ja Rule. Ooh. Yeah. Mac and cheese at the party? Sure. Why not? That's all I asked for. 25, 25 is not like a milestone milestone, but like that's that's like a yeah, we'll have we'll have we'll have a Tyler Milliken. We should start planning for this. Uh, I feel day, a little midlife crisis. Shut the fuck up. Uh, May 11th is a Thursday. 
off day for the Red Sox. Off day. That weekend, the Cardinals are in town. Ooh. So maybe we can have a Milliken mac and cheese birthday party with Ja Rule. <laughs> that would make me, it would heal me, but also child me, who didn't get enough mac and cheese. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Jake, make sure you get Ja Rule, though. I'm not, do, I'm not <laughs> going if he's not there. Wow. What? It's my birthday. Yeah, but Ja Rule. <sighs> it's okay. My revenge is coming. Let's get into the games here. Yeah, let's get I, into the games. Let's I, get into I, the games. I, I think you're running from the games a little bit right what now. What do you mean? They won. They, I was right about my prediction. I said they were going to win three out of four. They won three out of four. Let's start. Let's start with the games. Let's talk about the games. Let's start with game one. Let's start with game one. Go ahead. Me? You want me? What do you want me to do? Yeah, you were so excited about it. I figured that you had, you had a take about game no, one. Ready I to go. think I'll lead the way on game three. I'll let you lead the way on game one. Who pitched? Is that the Pavetta game? Uh, no, that was Hulk Sandoval in game one. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, like, this series kind of felt like the Red Sox were playing from behind the entire time, but you didn't care as much because... Oh, fr- yeah, that was the stupid-ass Apple TV game. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's why I don't have a ton of memories <laughs> of that game. I was like, yeah, you started on Friday. What the fuck happened on Friday? Uh, yes. Okay. So I got a take. I, I got a take on it. All right. Hit me with your take. Uh, the angels, like they gave this game away. Absolutely gave this game away between Luis Renjifo's error. Anthony Rendon, man. I don't know what he's going through. I, I understand. <laughs> I know there was some early season stuff. Those throws to first base were absolutely pathetic for a guy of his you know, caliber as a player. Um, and what caliber th- of a player is Anthony Rendon right now? Not a good one. A very poor one. Low tier. He's been he's not hitting awful, but he's just not the guy who signed that massive deal a couple of years back. No, no, he's yeah. never been that. You know what's crazy about the Angels is they absolutely handcuffed themselves with that Albert Pujols contract, got out from under it finally, and then we're like, let's give Anthony Rendon four hundred million dollars. They it, just it, they just were like, you know what we. We can't function as an organization unless we have a fucking albatross contract on the books for a long time. And say what you will. It's like Rendon makes pull holes look amazing. Like at least ever pulls gave you some holes. Yeah. Pools. Didn't we fight over this? It's not pull holes. It's pools. It. You're saying the same thing. No, you said pull holes. Upper pools. All right. I hate you. <laughs> I mean, Jake, how do you how do you say it? Pools. That's how you say it. Can you break it down like by syllable? Pool pool holes. Albert pool pool. holes. Pool. <laughs> right? You're saying like if there was a hole on a leash and you wanted to pull the hole. This is like like swimming pool. There's like a hole in the pool. Pool holes. Albert Pujols, but there's an H in there. Pujols. You're saying pool holes. You're saying you're saying pull holes. I don't want to. I listen. Josh Minkowski got the win in this game. So yes, he did. Yeah. And put some respect on his name. Three innings, one earned run. Who doesn't respect him? I've been saying fucking for weeks that this dude is legit. Actually, you know what? I go back to uh, that first series against Baltimore and I was like, Josh Winkowski's throwing 97 mile an hour sinkers. Is this a, is he a guy? And then everyone started following me after that. You are rewriting a lot of things, Jared. You are I'm rewriting not. a lot of things. Jake, who is the first person to, to crown Josh Winkowski as a legit bullpen arm? That was you. <laughs> are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I defended his honor. You trashed on the guy's mustache. Could you say oh, I mean, that, that has man? nothing to do with his ability to throw strikes and throw 97 mile an hour sinkers. Come on. Those are two I, different things. I think right now, if you mm-hmm. look outside of Kenley Jansen and John Schreiber, I yep. think you could even argue with Schreiber. He is your third most valuable reliever with Chris Martin going down. Like this See, is a I, massive time for him to really take a step forward. And what sucks is do you I would start have having to use him differently. And not have Chris Martin in that equation. Like wow. Chris Martin was putting up goose eggs, but did you feel like he was a shutdown guy when he was out there? No, he's not missing bats like he did with the Dodgers last year. No, down the stretch. Like, I, I, my top three would have been Kenley, Schreiber, Winkowski, or not touching that. 
Um, uh, yeah, I think that's fair. I just I worry now with where their bullpen is at. And, you know, Brazier or, you know, more Brazier had a really impressive outing on Sunday. Do they have to start using Winkowski a little bit differently to get by here? And I think what we saw at a Cutter Crawford today giving you six and a third. Do they say, all right, Winkowski, we're going to try to keep it to two innings or less so we can use you, you know, three, four times a week or something in that range. And we'll let Cutter play more of that three inning role from now on and hope for the best. See, that's where I think I'm old man now, because. I don't like using Josh Winkowski for multiple innings like that. Like, I, I just love when you have your closer. Like, I love stability, but I love one inning guys. Like, I love max effort one inning guys. Like, when you have, perfect example, right? 2007. It was supposed to be, supposed to be, Okajima to Gagne to Papelbon. Like, you have a lead by the six. You know the game's over because you have structure and you have three should have been dominant relievers. The people forget Eric Gagne that year. He was nasty with the Texas Rangers and then he came to the Red Sox and he was just fucking ass cheeks. Ass cheeks. But that was the plan. Okajima to Gagne to Papelbon. Smell you later. That was the plan. So I, I just, I don't know. Like if Winkowski is going to be this nasty sinker baller, then I, I don't know, like, because we, we saw it uh, in what's day Monday. We saw it yesterday when you use Kenley on Friday, Saturday, and now it's a one run game and you've got Mike Trout and Shohei Otani coming up in the ninth. Ah, shit. We got to go to Brazier here and you got away with it. Like Brazier's throwing 96. And and to his credit, I, I watched the post game with Brazier. Uh, he talked about how he. Uh, he had a different approach against Otani on Sunday compared to Saturday. He's like, I just faced him the day before. There's more fastballs than that at bat. Uh, I tried to throw some more off speed to him today to give him a different look because he just saw me and I'm Ryan Brazier and I, I can't I can't go up there and just be like, oh, I'm fucking Ryan Brazier. I'm going to blow 96 by like it's Shohei Otani. He's the best player on planet Earth. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of why I like having more structure versus I mean, the, the Carter Crawford role I love. It sucks for him because I'm sure he sees himself as a starting pitcher and he did start the year in the rotation and he was optioned to remain in the Woo Sox rotation to keep him stretched out so that what well, he could keep starting so that if a, if a spot opens up, then Cutter Crawford's the guy to come up and fill that role. But then you get the Zach Kelly injury. Now he's on the 60 day IL. Smell you later. It's unfortunate. Uh, I love Zach Kelly. Yeah, he was another one of those guys they used in the multi-inning fashion. It was like, yeah. go out there for two innings and give us that length when your starters give you five innings, at best case scenario, unless your name's Garrett Whitlock. Right. And then you had, did he go five and a third or six and a third today? Six and a third. Six and a third out of the bullpen, which is the second longest outing for a Red Sox pitcher this season. Uh, second to Garrett Whitlock, who went seven innings uh, on don't smirk, don't smirk. I'm not, oh, well, why would I smirk? smirk why because, would I smirk? Because the the Whitlock crew, we don't want you, dude. We fuck don't fucking, you, we fuck don't want you, Jared. That's fuck crazy. You. That is you're crazy. crazy. You're, you're trying to smirk at that right now. But I'm we'll not get smirking as hey, shit. Hey, hey, I'll take my victory lap when we get to the Whitlock segment. But I'm just saying, out of the bullpen today, Cutter Crawford, six and a third. That's the second longest uh, outing for a Red Sox pitcher. Second to Garrett Whitlock that also happened in this series. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't know if like that's a guy that obviously out of the bullpen, I don't mind if he's going to go multiple innings because you need that. Like some days, like today was a rain delay. It wasn't like a Red Sox starter blew up. I mean, Bayo did not look good. I mean, I, I thank God the rain, like you didn't have to embarrass him by coming out and pulling him in the second or the third. It's like, oh, no. Oh, uh, the rain delay. We don't want you to get hurt by going back out there. It's like, no, no, no. I'm actually just fine with you not going back out there. Uh, I, I will say when it comes to Winkowski, and I, I understand wanting to use him in the one inning burst or whatever, because like then you're going to see the 97. Like you're, you're going to see the stuff play up to the point. But I think the Red Sox bullpen, what was so exciting about it, really the first week of the season was you could map out seven, eight, nine. When Core felt fire in the sixth inning and he was like, dude, we need a shutdown inning and then we can kind of let the bullpen launch. He could do that. John Schreiber, come and get the job done. Winkowski, we'll throw you out for seven. Maybe we'll ride you for two. Maybe we won't. 
They just don't have that same flexibility right now. They don't have that same dependability back there. And that's what makes me nervous. You know, Ryan Brazier look good. Can he sustain it? Who knows? Caleb Ort, he's been solid. You know what I mean? Do I feel comfortable with him coming in in a late game, two to one? Did I feel comfortable when he couldn't find the strike zone on Sunday and we were scared for our lives before that pickoff? I don't. And if this bullpen isn't there to be the strength it is, it makes me very nervous because then you're throwing a lot more on this rotation. And as we see, Brian Bayo is going to, there's going to be bumps with Garrett Whitlock. There's going to be bumps. Chris Sale looks like he's relearning how to pitch at this level again, or at least as a starting pitcher. Scary. Kluber. Kluber is never going to be a guy who's giving you six or seven innings. You're never getting that out of him. Um, And if you do, it's a day where he somehow goes out and dominates. So and Nick Pavetta, like Nick Pavetta is going to have some blow ups, too, but he's probably really the only guy we looked this series. He had one of those blow ups, but, you know, there's going to probably be a lot of times where they have to lean heavily on this bullpen. So I think this Chris Martin injury is going to it's going to make us sweat a lot more, in the, at least for the next two weeks or so as they kind of piece it together here. And I don't think there's any conversation you could have right now and say you got to send Cutter Crawford back down. I don't care about being stretched out. You need him in that bullpen. You need him. Yeah. Uh, also, <clears throat> I think it was Jamai was talking to Chris Martin the other day uh, about the injury and how they caught it early. So how they're optimistic about it. Jared, um, am I crazy? His last outing, he grabbed something, yeah. grabbed him. The trainer came out and he stayed in the game. Correct. And I believe he struck out the next guy. I believe so. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's there's something else to that. That. Whoa. We'll see. Yeah. Jesus, I don't like the sound of that. It's not it's not like it's it's not it has nothing to do with the injury. I I will just say the medical staff makes me very nervous on this team constantly. And it's been that way for well over a year now. What can you do if you go out to the mound and the guy tells you he's fine? What are you going to do? Tell him that he's not fine. Sometimes you do have to protect the player a little bit if something's grabbing him. But I will say more in terms of giving timelines or saying things aren't a big deal. And then it turns into, you know, Yoshida only needs a day. And then it turns into four or five days. And we're watching, you know, crazy roster construction as they, you know, lose basically a player on their roster for, you know, three, four or five days, whatever it was. Yeah. And I'm not going to relive the Trevor story or the Evaldi stuff or any of that. Uh, you know, the medical staff, Justin Turner's talked about it, that, you know, it does a lot. but. Man, they make me nervous. Timetables with them and certain situations made me very nervous over the last year. Mm. And this is not exactly a bullpen that can tread water once you start losing valuable bullpen arms. Like we just had the conversation about like, where would you put Chris Martin in the pantheon of reliable Red Sox relievers? he had been pitching well. Like it's not like it's not like this is a guy that uh, you're going to knock for his performance he's been good but in terms of stuff and results like i told you like when i was watching him down in spring training uh it, like i just didn't i didn't i hadn't seen dodger chris martin yet and i don't think that we really saw that in his performances to start the year not to sure, say do that you want me to there. confirm your eye test here please 257 era right like numbers wise just run production has been good the fip was 504 he was it's a 2.6 Strikeouts per nine, which is that's really bad. That's really bad. Yeah. And what's like the contact look like? Uh, Give me one second. I can pull something up. But just for reference, in 2022, he was 11.9 K per nine. So like that's how much there was a difference. And I didn't think anything was like it didn't seem like the velocity was considerably down or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But just pulling up his baseball savant page here, it will load for me. Um. Uh, yeah, expected batting average, ninth percentile, second percentile K percentage, but hard hit 37th percentile, 80th percentile barrel percentage. Um, so he's the ball. There was some hard hit stuff going on there. Definitely not great, but not straight barrels either. Hmm. Hard contact. I think that's what 95 miles per hour and over. Yeah. So I, it just it worries me because those innings need to go somewhere. And if you're telling me Ryan Brazier and Caleb Ort are going to get more of those innings, I'm going to be kind of nervous. And I don't trust Richard Blyer anywhere near no. that mound right now. He is it is awful and it is ugly. And I don't know why they think he can get out righties. I think part of it's because they just they don't have another lefty who can do it. Couldn't get righties out last year. 
he's not getting lefties out right now. So he's a loogie in a role that's already too big for him. No. <clears throat> and he reminds me of Buckholtz too. Oh, is there a reason for that? Yeah, like how um, he, he had his uh, post game the other day and he had given up like a hard hit, uh, like RBI, whatever. And he was like, well, I made a good pitch. Well, it wasn't a good pitch because he hit it, but I thought it was a good pitch. And I was like, oh, don't say shit like that. Like that just gives me Buckholtz PTSD. I don't blame you. I don't blame you for that one. Yeah. But I, I, go ahead. No, nah, I, I just I don't want to pick apart the Red Sox bullpen too much because for what, eight and nine right now, how many games could you really pin on the bullpen? Like that's not that's not something that's caused uh opening know, day. That's the only one that comes to mind. What was opening day? That was the Brazier absolute meltdown. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. But in that game, even like Corey Kluber didn't give you really anything to start. That's really the only. Out. What'd you say? It was cold out. True. Yeah. Th- that's right there as well. The bullpen has been arguably the main reason you are where you are right now because they've stepped up and carried the rotation when it hasn't been there. Mm. <sighs> I really wanted that last one because this twin series is going to be tough. Pitching wise. No, I, I'm not looking forward to it. I think it's one of the more underrated staffs, but I do think there was a nice moment on Friday night when Kenley went in the ninth inning. It felt mm-hmm. like the fan base or people that hadn't been paying attention was like, holy shit, like Kenley's throwing harder than ever. Like he looks like prime Kenley. And mm-hmm. I think that is an awesome kind of not a fuck you, but for everyone who was and I think it's fair was debating whether he'd be able to hold up under the pitch clock. Dude, he's walking out and being like, I'm better than friggin ever. Like a lot of people thought I was torched. I went right at these guys and I didn't flinch. And then what? It was a seven, um, seven pitch save on Saturday. So what more can you ask out of him? I think he's been excellent. It's just, it breaks my heart that the guy they were leaning on in the eighth inning, he's not going to be there. That, that's a tough, they've had enough injuries as is. That's just one that takes away from arguably your biggest strength. Well, doesn't that bode well for your Josh Winkowski? <laughs> um, want a podcast. Um, if you're if you're a Josh Winkowski guy and he's pitching well enough to where you can be trusted in that role. And let's not forget, Caleb Ort has been trusted in some big spots so far this young season. And he's come through. He has. He has. Caleb Ort is is low key him. We lost you again. I was just going on about Caleb Ort. It's okay. I'm happy um, I didn't hear it. Yeah. <laughs> He's just, <laughs> listen, at the end of the day, Caleb Ward is exactly who I said he was. And he might be one of your best, if not your best bullpen arm right now. Uh, I will say, yesterday made me a little nervous. I, I wasn't in love with what I saw Why? from Caleb Ward. Because, listen, the pickoff attempt was nice. I'm not giving him credit for that. Sorry. Not his mess. No. What? What? Hold on. How many, how many Red Sox pitchers have picked off a runner this year? It, none, but it wasn't his call. Carlos Febles had it in the dugout. He he made the call on that for them to do it. So it was nice. He got bailed out in that moment. Where I will give him credit for is in game two of the series. Yes, he came in and he, Urshela had that garbage blooper to keep the game within rain there and not let it get away. That's how you set yourself up for that kind of win where you can win it nine to seven and still have a chance. He was he got by yesterday. He got by. He didn't implode. And that's something I will say about Caleb Ort, who used to absolutely implode. He'd fill his diaper. There'd be shit leaking out. He did not do that. And to that, for me, that's credit. And then they go to Brazier in the ninth. They were saving it. You know, what core sees is a bigger bullet than Caleb Ort. That's not true. They're just they're 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 flip flopping. Oh, no. Look, there's Cora said Otani Trout. (laughs) Ryan Brazier, go get him. That's not. Yeah, he did say that. That's what that AC told me. That, <clears throat> that's that's not that's not to say that Caleb Bort couldn't have got that job done. He could have, but if that ninth inning looked like that eighth inning, you would be terrified. Yeah. Well, baseball season's in full swing, Tyler. Is it? Yeah. Whether you're rooting for the home team or betting on your favorite player, DraftKings Sportsbook has got you covered with all this season's action. And right now, new customers can place a five dollar pregame money line bet and get one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets if your team wins. Plus, everyone can hit one out of the park with DraftKings stepped-up same-game parlays. 
Boost your winnings with each leg you add up to 100%. Jake was so close to hitting his sweep, the Jake special, as we like to call it, uh, the Red Sox sweep bet, and they probably should have done it. They came that that was a, that was such a winnable game. It was such a winnable game today. I'm still upset about it. Uh, but join the big league action right now on the DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app. Sign up with the promo code Carabas C A R R A B I S. New customers can bet just five dollars on any pregame money line and get one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets if their team wins. Only at the DraftKings Sportsbook with promo code Carabas. Um. All right. Go ahead. I'm not going to show ball. I, I'm going to put Go it ahead. like this. I'm not. Uh, let me speak. Go Thank ahead. you. When it comes to Garrett Whitlock last week, when he got, you know, absolutely trash, you were very, I, I thought you had a very level-headed take where you're like, listen, it's one start. I, I'm not going to freak out over it. Like, when have I'm I not ever gonna, not been level-headed? When have I ever not been level-headed? Tom? There's been times. Caleb Ort. Um, Jake, Jake, have I ever not been level-headed on this podcast? I can't remember a single time. Me neither. Like, I'm trying to think of one time and I... I don't I can't, I mean because even the the example that Tyler just used Caleb Ort being not a level head to take a, you just told me he's the best reliever in the Red Sox bullpen. He has the best stuff in the Red Sox bullpen. That's a statistical fact. Do you want me to get HBT stuff on plus. this fucking podcast cuz I will get him on here right now to tell you read all the names all the numbers about Caleb Ort and how he has the best stuff on the staff. That's a fact. His stuff plays up best in the stuff oh plus metric. One day um, one day you're going to recognize his talent. Because right I now, because right now, I you think I'm what? giving credit to it. You have, but you also roll your eyes when I mention him as one of the best relievers in the bullpen and having the best stuff. If we were to do the Trusto meter, I don't mm-hmm. think Caleb Ort's in your four. I think he's in my prob- four in your top four. You know what? Let's pull up Ed's thing. I was actually just looking at it. Shout out okay. Ed Han. He's the man. Yeah. Um, he was at the game the other day. I I wanted to go say hi, but I wasn't there. I didn't make it to any games this series, unfortunately. Okay, let, wh- so let's just go down the list here. He has Kenley Jansen, one. I think that's right. Mm-hmm. Josh Winkowski, two. Yep. Schreiber, three. Yep. Cutter Crawford, four. No. Caleb Ort, four. Nope. Ryan Brazier, five. Uh, <laughs> didn't, didn't Cutter Crawford just give up like a mammo bomb the other day? In relief? Yeah, I think so, right? Or was it a start? I don't know. When is the last time he started? In Tampa? Uh, was it Tampa? Wasn't it Detroit that last game there? I don't know. Either way, he's not. He good. He's not. He's not above Caleb Ort. That's just. He's just not. Come on, keep up. Agree to disagree. Okay. Um, Who's, who, wait, who comes after? Who comes after Cutter Crawford on the list? Ryan Brazier. Oh my god! Five. Ed Hand. Ed Hand. Not having what? Uh, I, I, I don't. Honestly, Where does he I have Caleb Ort? Six. That's wrong. That's wrong. You, I can't put him ahead of Cutter Crawford. I'd, I'd take I Cutter just Crawford did. in a big spot. I just did. He should be three. Cutter like Crawford just a, gave you six and a third shutout innings out of the bullpen. That's called a fucking start, Tyler. Not he's when you come starter. out of the friggin' bullpen. But and, he's a, that's a start. Like you don't like a reliever doesn't go six and a third. That's your second longest outing of the year by any pitcher. That's a fucking start that happened in the middle of the game. We have all talked about it with Cutter Crawford. We wanted him in the bullpen. Did we not? We thought he'd play well in the bullpen and he'd be a major piece this year. That's what we were saying before the season. We were saying that a week and a half ago before he got optioned. That's what we were saying about Cutter Crawford. He came out of the bullpen today and did the damn job. It's a different role. Not everyone can do it. And I think some people are scared because Cutter Crawford last year when he was in that, you know, two inning or three inning role, the Whitlock role, he got hit a little bit. But that was before he had the breakthrough when he was in the rotation in that summer. I think Cutter Crawford out there would be a very good Josh Winkowski type weapon. I think he'd be that good. And that's how I project Cutter Crawford. I think Caleb Ort is like, you know, the second or last arm in your bullpen. I'm not trying to take anything away from Cutter Crawford. I like Cutter Crawford as a starter. I think that he can be a weapon as a reliever if that's what he's asked to do. If that's what the, the roster construction kind of fizzles out to, to him taking over that role. But you're not going to cite six and a third as a reliever and use that as an argument for why he's a better reliever than Caleb Ort because that, my friend, was a start that happened in the it, middle of the game. It was just a relief outing that went very long. That's yeah, all it was. 
it's because they're trying to keep him stretched out to be a starter because he's a starter. Yeah, I, I do think I, he has starter quality it. stuff. Yeah. I, I, Cutter Crawford, Cutter Crawford should not even be on the, the reliever list. Like Ed Hand should remove him. But we, he's, he's probably going to need to be at least until Martin's back. So what is that? Like two weeks? It's two weeks. It's a long, two weeks ago, we didn't have a season. That's not true. It was what? We were three games in? That's season started. Oh, spare me. All I'm saying is if tomorrow was opening day and I had to tell you to pick who would have better stats in a relief role, Cutter Crawford or Caleb Ort, you'd pick Cutter Crawford every time. And if you say no, you'd, you're a bold faced liar. No, I think you're asking the wrong guy that question. Uh, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> you could ask me if I wanted Caleb Ort or prime Mariano Rivera and I'm going Caleb Ort. You're troubling. No, let's circle back. Let's circle back to Whitlock. I just want to make one more point. I'll allow it. Mariano Rivera, <laughs> although very good, <laughs> he's given up runs before. Yes? 100%. Okay. <laughs> so, Caleb Ort, mm -hmm. yesterday, he gave up someone else's runs, not his own. He didn't give up a run yesterday. You he think gave it was up Saturday. someone else's run. Sat whatever the fuck. Yeah, Saturday. That's it? Yeah. <laughs> Someone screen cap that and send it to me on Twitter. I'd like to post it. Um, <laughs> just for future reference. Suck on uh, <laughs> but with Whitlock, listen, I, I know a lot of people think I'm going to get on here and I'm going to, you know, drop my dick on your forehead or whatever it may be. I, I, Garrett Whitlock looked great. You know, seven innings, one earned run, gave you everything you could ask for. It reminded me a lot of Rick Parcello. Just like vintage. You need a ground ball from a guy who gave up so many fly balls in that first start that we were freaking out. The ground ball rate was 50% on Sunday. That That's is perfect. the biggest thing for him. That's the Garrett Whitlock that we know. And I thought what was even crazier, and Jared, this is what you kind of labeled as your biggest concern was the slider, slider last year. Percentage. Uh, now, do you want to hear the numbers on his slider now through two starts? Mm -hmm. 77 batting average, 139 expected batting average, 77 slugging, 160 expected slugging. The whiff percentage, 60%. That's boom. All right. There you That's go. That's what you were looking for, right? Exactly. Ground balls and swing and misses on the slider. That's what I wanted from Garrett Whitlock. In the velo, like he topped out at 97. It was like 96.8. It wasn't consistently. Well, he was that sitting high, like 93, 94, which I consider a tick up. I don't up. care. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I'm not looking for Garrett Whitlock to be 97, 98 as a starter. Like I, I, it's are they swinging and missing at the slider? Is he getting balls hit on the ground for outs? Yes. OK, good. And just to see him work that deep in the game and the stuff sustain, I think he threw 99 pitches total. That's what the Red Sox are looking for. But in the same vein, can you do it consistently? I want to see, you know, in four days, Whitlock go out there, give me six innings, two runs. Let me see that you can do this every turn over the course of a year, and then we'll be somewhere. And the one thing that I'm still looking for him is the changeup. I don't think he has the right feel for it still. He's not leaning on it as much. And while I really liked what the slider showed, it shocked me because scouts were down on the slider during spring training. They were they were saying they didn't like how he kind of changed the shape of it. Clearly, it's working. I just want to see that change up, make the last step, and then I'll feel really good about it overall. But massive step in the right direction. And, you know, clearly a win for whoever's in the Whitlock starting club. But we you're saw welcome. him also get shelled. Whenever you want to come in, you're welcome. Why? Why do this? Can you you've mentioned it more than anyone that what? I take a lot of L's in life. I, I don't have much going for me. I don't say that. I don't say that about you. Jake, have I ever said that about Tyler? Jake, play the tape back right here from like a previous episode for me. I don't have it because it doesn't exist. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, I, I've always called you Tyler W. Milliken and I don't. Tyler Willikin. Tyler Willikin <laughs> is what I've called you. Uh, and yeah, so I don't really know what you're talking about. But, you know, like I said. If you want, if you want to stop calling him shitlock and start believing in him as a starter, we would love to have you. It's we're only two starts in, so I don't think that it's it's not even really joining a bandwagon if you're in after two starts because you've only seen one good one. Like you're, it's fifty fifty. You've had one bad one, one good one. So if you want to, if you want in on the bandwagon, you're welcome. With my bare hands, with the rain coming down on me. The anger and hatred of so many. I built this bandwagon hand by hand. I put it together. I, I day for day. I, I just I listened to the hate and I, I was willing to bear it. Yeah. You know, I 
with Lou. I, I was sat willing and, to bear it. I let Lou absolutely dunk on me when I thought for a second someone was going to help me build this bandwagon. That was a very funny clip, by the way. Uh, you uh, thought he was going to agree with you and he did. I, I, I did, but to hear what Lou had to say on the broadcast where he's like, listen, even, even he has to admit, I've never been in the Whitlock camp, but this is something. I'm not letting you take this from me. Um, mm-hmm. You know, maybe I should treat this like a bit of a victory speech of some sorts, but Please, I, I appreciate everyone who supported me and I'm hoping I'm not celebrating on anyone, but uh, you got to keep it going. But that's not victory music. This is like the movie before the movie music. No, I need to pick my own victory song. Star Wars? Make the fucking speech, Tyler. <laughs> Gary Whitlock, I always believed in you. I still believe you're going to be a starter in the big leagues. And no matter what Jared says, he calls you Garrett Shitlock, and I never did. So fuck him. Thank I've you. Never, I've never. You I've invented never, Garrett Shitlock. You invented no, I that. No, I didn't. I, legit, because, if you look it up right now, it says Garrett Shitlock dash Jared Carabas. No. Look I, on the B-Ref page. Mm-hmm. Look it up, Jake. Well, because I've always believed in him as a reliever so i never thought that he was bad i just thought that his role should have been different but you just didn't believe in him period which is different has your opinion changed jared i think i think i've stayed pretty consistent i said i need to see it this is literally what i said about shohei otani if you recall if you're a starting nine listener from back in the day and dallas is ready to crown his ass after like fucking like one game and i was like yeah you know like we've we've seen guys with a lot of hype come into the league and like, if you want to buy in early, that's fine. You'll you'll look brilliant if it works out, but you'll look like an idiot if it doesn't, because there's more examples of it not working out than it working. Shohei Otani comes over to the United States and plays Major League Baseball. And, you know, it. everyone's like, yeah, he's the he's the Japanese Babe Ruth. I'm like, OK, well, let's see it. That was my stance. I never like Dallas will try to hold it over my head as if I had just said, no, it's not going to work out. All I said was I need to see it before I buy into it. Uh I feel like I had the same approach with Garrett Whitlock as a starter where my thought process was I've seen him be an elite relief pitcher and I like that. I've seen him attempt to be a starting pitcher before this season started and I didn't like that. But the caveat there is that I recognize that he was pitching with an injury. So coming into the year, I was like, you know, yeah, if it were up to me, I would have him in the bullpen but then you talked me into well if this is a quote unquote bridge year then this would be the year to figure out what you have with Garrett Woodlock let's see if he can start and I was like you know what let's see it and to my credit we've only seen it on one start this year like great I'm, I'm right there I'm with not, you I'm not crowning him I'm not crowning him but I'm not sitting here saying what are the Red Sox doing? Put him in the bullpen. Blah, blah. I think the, the issue last year was uh, when you were blowing games, like how many games in the first half? Uh, in even April. in like 2020. Yeah, like there were, there were a bunch of games where when Garrett Whitlock was a starter, the Red Sox were blowing games in the ninth inning where it's like, how many more wins would they have had if he was still in the bullpen? That was my issue then. This year, it's like, well, you have Kenley Jansen. So I have less of a what the fuck are we doing urge as it pertains to Garrett Whitlock. Uh, So I'm more inclined because of the circumstances of the season, the roster under the luxury tax expectations. Yeah. All right. This is, this would be the year to figure it out. This would be there to figure out what you have with him. And, and I'm there and and so far so good. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the last time Garrett Whitlock threw seven innings, I saw it on Twitter was 2018 at like double a. So like, that's how long it's been since this guy did handle that kind of, know workload going deep into a game we don't know how it's going to hold up i don't know what he's going to look like in a month is he going to be gassed is he going to be kind of running out of fuel and we see velo drop i don't know i think all this does is justify anyone who was completely against it and you weren't one of those people jared but anyone who was like you cannot move him to the rotation or even give it a shot he showed why there's a fair reasoning for him to have this opportunity and run through and i think that's the big positive and at the end of the day between bayo and we're about to we can hit on him as well those two are, you know, outside of Devers are the biggest parts of the Red Sox moving forward and where this organization's heading and whether they can compete, um, you know, just at a high level, a playoff level or whatever it may be. You need serious growth from them this year and you need answers. And 
you know, we'll get them as we go. But I think as Whitlock got rocked, that's the same reason, or Whitlock got rocked in his first start. It's the same reason you shouldn't be panicking about Brian Bayo today. Yeah, I'm not, I mean, he, he looked very similar to how he looked in his big league debut against Tampa. Um, and he was also pitching in a torrential downpour. Like, I'm not going to take too much out of Brian Bayo's performance today uh, and put much, if any, stock in it whatsoever. Uh, but like, I guess like a couple final thoughts here on Whitlock. Uh, I think out of outside of Bayo, out of everyone that you have as a starting pitcher, he's got the most promise to be a starting pitcher in your rotation next year. Like, like the, I don't think we're going to ever, ever be entertaining any conversations about Brian Bayo going to the bullpen or no. being put out to pasture, <laughs> you know? Like I think Garrett Whitlock is is your is your number two. So uh, I think the Red Sox look at it and they're like, we view Bayo as a top of the rotation arm. Like he can be maybe a two. I don't want to throw ace stuff on him. That you know, that's something that just you got to click, you work through it. It could be in a couple of years, but I think they do think Bayo will be a top of the rotation arm. I think Whitlock they view as like the perfect number three. Yeah, like Rick Porcello. Rick Porcello. But- that's the perfect comp. But a more consistent version. I, I love Porcello. And is Whitlock's favorite player. That's why he wears 22. Um, but I think... Rick you Porcello know, with nastier shit, too. He's got more weapons than Rick did. That's it. And just be more consistent in the innings eater. But when he started getting those double plays, I'm like, man, this screams Rick Porcello in every single way where a game goes by in an hour and 57 minutes. That reminds me of a Rick Porcello complete game where I'm sitting there with a big smile on my face and was like, I didn't have to sweat once the whole day. Like, that is refreshing to me. Just be that guy and the Red Sox will be in a good spot because you got a guy in the bullpen and Cutter Crawford who can be a big league starter. If you can, you know, two or three of those spots, you don't have to worry about moving forward. That's a real, you know, nice boost to trying to build a you know championship contender or a really good team. Rick Porcello is is a fascinating case study. Like he was the last of a dying breed. Like he was he was old school. When he was in his late 20s, early 30s, he came up when he was 20. Remember when Kevin Euclid charged the mound on him? Threw his helmet at him? Rick was 20, I believe, at the time. No, you're right. That was his age 20 season. <laughs> like, Kevin Euclid charged the mound on a 20-year-old kid, and Rick tossed him. I was about to say, Rick ended up on top there, man. Yeah. He did not, and he was skin and bones yeah. at that time. Like, dude, Euclid was like a muscle, like a walking muscle running at you. Euclid is barbarian. He like spy like, kids like the thumb guy. That's what if Kevin Euclid was running at me, that's what I would see. If if Kevin Euclid charges the mount on Rick Porcello a hundred times, he probably ends up on top 97 times, but not on this day. <laughs> not on this day. Uh, uh, I think if if you look at Rick Porcello's career coming up under the Max Scherzer's, the Justin Verlander's, the David Price's, like he's had he's been in rotations with like guys like Annabelle Sanchez. Uh and then when he got to Boston, he was that veteran presence, but he was still even then like late 20s, early 30s. And then it they just tried fell to frame apart. him as like the follow up to Lester. Like this was the next guy who was going to anchor your rotation. Remember, he got the extension for a little bit. Yeah, he was, I mean, he he got, was solid. He got f- what? 80 over four. Yeah, it, w- it was something like that. Before he even threw a pitch for the Red Sox, he got an extension. You want a Cespedes trade, which was. Yep. Interesting, but after 2018, it was kind of just like he faded away and then he he just quietly retired and like we don't hear from him. He's not a social media guy, uh, not a vibrant personality. He was just baseball like he was just, hey, I'm going to go out there, do my fucking job and try and like, you know, he's kind of he had a lot of Chris Sale in him. Obviously not as psychotic, but there was some psychotic behavior. Like, didn't he fucking smash the TV going down the stairs to the dugout there? I think it was multiple. Didn't he get two yeah. of them? I've posted that gif or the video like a million times on Twitter yeah. when I've been mad. Yeah, but he like, smashed the TV going down there. I mean, he was one of those guys that uh, he was old school and he you he I feel like he would have hated like the whole like, oh, you know, maybe you're not one of the guys that can see the lineup for a third time. You'd be like, what the fuck do you mean? Like, I want to go nine every single time. And he meant it. And like you look at his career here, like he was a 443 ERA over those years. He won a Cy Young in 2016, as we all know, he won 22 games. But like 
never the best stuff by any means. It was just a lot of ground balls. And that's kind of the way he went about it. But I'll go to my grave, like 2020, last season, 31 years old, 564 ERA. The FIP was 333. Yeah. Like he could, he could still be pitching in the big leagues if he wanted to. He'd still be a back end arm. But man, Rick Purcell's got other, I guess, other things he wants to do in life. I think he just wants to be off the grid. Like for a guy that wanted to be off the grid while he was playing, Boston was an interesting choice. But that was one of my biggest, if not my biggest dub over Felger was I was doing TV with Felger in 2015. And Felger was just like, this guy sucks, this and that. I was like, hey, Felger. And it all goes back to, I can't remember if I've told this story or not. Um, Winter weekend, 2015. So this was Porcello's first year in Boston was 15, I think. Yep. Yeah. So his first year was in Boston was in 2015. And he sucked, but he was hurt. But he kept pitching because it's like, oh, that's just who he is. Like, I'm just going to keep pitching like this team traded for me and whatever. Um, so he was ass in 15 and then I met him for the first time at winter weekend after the 2015 season. And we just had this like long conversation about, uh, his, his preparation and how he was hurt. And like, you know, he basically sold me on him. He was like, listen, like you're about to see some shit this year. And I was like, okay, all right, Rick Porcello. Fuck yeah, dude. And so, I mean, anyone, any big leaguer is going to have the confidence to be like, yeah, like I'm going to ball out this year. And then maybe they do, maybe they don't. But I believed Rick and I took that. I didn't like say that I talked to him and that's why I believe in him so much. But I took that conversation into my battles with Felger and I was like, you'll fucking see, dude. I was like, Rick Porcel <laughs> is going to ball out this year and you'll, you'll look like a real asshole at the end of the season. And he just, he mocked me the entire time. Oh, Rick Porcel. Yeah, he's great. And then he won the Cy Young Award. So Rick. Take that, Justin Verlander. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was that pep talk at winter weekend before the season with Rick that I, I really bought in. I don't know how we got on a Rick Porcel. I guess because the 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 Garrett Whitlock comparison. But that's a guy that I would love to have on the podcast at some point, Rick Porcel. I don't even know if he has a cell phone. Like he's that, ki- he's that type of guy. So. But I, I think I, I know people that know him. Do you know what he's doing these days? He's got to just be like J.D. Drew, just off the grid, just living in the woods, just doing his thing. You're not far. Now, if you were to pick a location, where do you think he'd be in the woods? Nebraska? Vermont. Vermont. Nebraska doesn't have woods. Awful, awful take. That um, can't be true. He's Nebraska, in Vermont. Nebraska he's been doesn't building have a woods? House. This is from 2021, so I can't tell you how recent it is. Uh, or, you know, how far along he is in this process. But he was building a house from scratch in Vermont. Last time Bradford talked to him, he was building a house from scratch. Yeah, that's the that's the exact phrasing. Just imagine Rick Porcello brick by brick every day, just putting together this beautiful like cabin mansion. And instead of playing baseball, he's like, hey, I want to fucking saw young dude. Like I hit the top here. I got a World Series ring in 2018. I've played with some of the most amazing names ever. I'm just going to be in the woods. I'm going to build this house. And that's what I'm going to spend my 30s doing. Mm. good for him he does seem like the type to do that good for him him and him and bill lee can hang out in the woods together and they can drink some blue moons while they're building that house together and jake can tell us all about blue moon how delicious it is the coriander all give me some credit jake i don't think he's gonna I'm definitely not gonna. Some beers can say they're brewed for baseball, but only Blue Moon is brewed by baseball. Beer and baseball just go together, and no beer goes better than the one that was literally born in a ballpark. Blue Moon was created at Coors Field in Denver, Colorado. It's the natural choice for opening day and all season long. You know, when Tyler brought up the ring of plates earlier, I think it might have been the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I mean, if we really want to break down what happened, he called it the ring of plates. He meant to say the ring of fire, and then he tried to save it by saying that plate is the same word as fire. Look, I don't really want to spend too much time on it, but that guy is an idiot. With its refreshing flavor with Valencia orange peel for a subtle sweetness and hints of coriander, Blue Moon Belgian-style wheat ale is a -a one-of-a-kind beer that's made brighter. It's carefully crafted and full-flavored with refreshing notes and a smooth, creamy finish. 
Blue Moon was brewed by baseball to give you a dose of nostalgia and get you excited for the new season. Why strike out with the same old beer when you can get something one of a kind? Its bold flavor, bright explosion of color, and iconic orange slice ritual guarantee a one of a kind beer experience perfect for spring weather. Best served with its signature orange garnish to showcase its beautiful bright color, a beer this good only comes around once in a blue moon, but you can enjoy it all season long. Bring the ballpark to you with Blue Moon Belgian Style Wheat Ale. It's a one of a kind every time. Check out shop.bluemoonbrewingcompany.com for beer and baseball merch or visit get.bluemoonbeer.com slash jared to find Blue Moon delivery options. That's get.bluemoonbeer.com slash jared. Blue Moon, made brighter. Celebrate responsibly Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado Ale. Thank you, Jake. Appreciate that very much. Um, before we do the uh, Stop and Chop Look Ahead and uh, the Clark's Ketchup Series MVP, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about 2013. Oh, just the having them back and what it what it felt like the introduction. Um, I felt personally, I, I was a little sad. I didn't get to enjoy at least on TV the full thing. I was like speeding home, and I only saw Koji at the very end. Mm. But were you disappointed by it? Did you think it was going to be more, or did it give you that you know ten year anniversary feeling? Um, I thought. I mean, like I was I was happy with the turnout. I mean, I feel like most guys showed up. Xander couldn't make it, unfortunately. He's Napoli's in working with Chicago. Yeah, Napoli's the what first base coach for the Cubs. Um, who else was missing though? That was like a key guy. Like was Junichi uh, Tazawa was there, right? Tazawa was there. I'm trying to think, uh, got some big outs against Miguel Cabrera and Prince Fielder in that ALCS. Let's pull up the roster here. David Ross is busy managing the Chicago Cubs right now. Did you feel like it was weird seeing Andrew Miller as part of that team? No, because I mean he 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 was there. He was a guy. I mean, he Jacoby Ellsbury in- make you feel anything? So his his face filled out a little bit, huh? You're saying he's getting a little fat. I'm not saying he's fat. It's just uh, he's uh, Jacoby Ellsbury. He had that like GQ model, like slender face with a jawline, and now it's a, it's a little more fluffy, but. It was like Jaron Duran esque. You know what? I, you know who the the two the two guys who didn't age at all. Like a lot of those guys looked like they aged noticeably. There are two guys who did not age at all. Who are they? Two guys. Shane Victorino. No, he looks like he's aged a little bit. Really? You think so? Mm-hmm. Um, Will Middlebrooks. I guess, but like Will, Will was a baby then. It's a fair point. We're talking about a guy who's in his thirties. Um, yeah, Will, Will, like Will has aged, but not like he doesn't look old. He just looks like he's in his thirties now. Would you say David Ortiz? David Ortiz has not aged a fucking he, he, day. He could go and play tomorrow. I, I believe that, that, that was all my, my first heart. thought when he was out there. I was like, his beard. He's got no grays in it. Oh, I know number two. Who? Salty? No, Johnny Gomes. Yeah, I get Johnny I, Gomes has not aged. Salty Salty hasn't really aged, but like his hair is much longer now. It's majestic. Yeah. I need to pull up a picture of Johnny Gomes here. Oh, yeah. I, all right. I, yeah, yeah, I'll give you that one. That is a pretty good comp. He really yeah. does look young, which is Jake crazy. PV2. Jake PV2. Jake PV looks good. No one looks bad. Hmm. Dustin looks like he could still go out there and play. Dustin looks old to me. I, I will say that he looks, he looks old older. To me. Yeah, he lo- he looks like a, he looks like how he should. He looks like a he looks like a veteran at the back end of his career, which he would be. Like he's not forty yet. Pedroia, yeah. Dustin Pedroia is thirty nine. Yeah, he's He'll right be there. forty this August, August seventeenth. He was my favorite person in the booth. Like no, no disrespect to Shane Victorino, like I, I thought he was really interesting. When Pedroia was in the booth, I swear there's no one that is more transparent and honest mm-hmm. about what it's like to play on a day to day basis. And hearing him like just say it, like, yeah, you guys always look back at the years, you know, when I won MVP or Rookie of the Year, and you're like, oh, you know, why wasn't this every year? He's like, 
you guys have no idea the shit I was playing through. And he was mm-hmm. like, the numbers I put up with some of the injuries I had, you couldn't even fathom. Uh, and, you know, he t- talks about the torn UCL in his thumb after opening day in 2013. Like, I was just sitting there and I'm like, I miss Dustin Pedroia like mm-hmm. so much. But mm-hmm. that's the that's the stuff that people don't account for for his legacy. Just what he what he brought to you day to day. And it makes me sad. It makes me sad when I hear about, you know, the what ifs and if he could have played longer. But I, I was very happy with it overall. I did think like, I don't know. I, I thought there'd be more of a. 2013 push the last couple days like it felt like it was kind of spread out and maybe that's just how I interpreted it but I don't know I, I'd love to see those guys back again I think when you have them there's just it's like it's a brotherhood like seeing David Ortiz and Koji like are you freaking kidding me like yeah. that lift up gave me life you know what else it is too is like David was on three World Series winners so it's almost like like uh, I'm trying to think of like the perfect comparison here um like when is david grohl in queens of the stone age i don't know what that is oh my fucking god dude queens of the stone age what is I, that I, I i hate you is that wrestling shut the fuck up uh <laughs> jake do you know queens of the stone age uh yeah Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I was right. Oh, it's a band. Um Yeah, but like David Grohl, first he was in Nirvana, then the Foo Fighters, and then Queens of the Stone Age. Wow. But it's like you bring back the 2004 team, that's like David Ortiz at being in Nirvana. It's like, yeah, like that's the one. And then you have 2007 is like Queens of the Stone Age where it's like, was he in that band? I don't even, I don't know. Then 2013 is more like the Foo Fighters, where it's like, yeah, Foo Fighters are fucking awesome. Like, David Ortiz, best World Series of all time. Like, he was really the front man of that one. But 2004, like Nirvana, like, that's like the classic. Like, who doesn't love 2004? And then 2007, you're like, Queens of Stone Age is even in that band? But that's, honestly, that may be the best fucking comparison that I've ever drawn up in my entire life, is that David Ortiz is in three extremely successful bands there's one that is the all time classic. There's one that he was like the very clear front man of. And then there's the other one where it's like, I don't even remember if he was in that band, but he is. And it's a good band, but like, whatever. So that's why when you have like 2013, it's like, yeah, it, it's, it's David Ortiz. Like they're going to bring him back every single world's here. Like if they have a 2018, which they will celebration, they'll probably bring Poppy back for that. He wasn't on the team. <laughs> But yeah, like, you know, the 2018 team. And here comes Big Poppy to throw out the first pitch. Woo! Like, that's... He's just David Ortiz. It's like, it is what it is. I guess I just wanted more fire. Like, like I think about when Pedroia... You love fire on this episode. I, I just... I want... I like the dramatics of it all. I do think a lot of people were also in the state of, like, oh, my God, how is that 10 years ago? Like, there, there's no way it's been 10 years. And, like, <laughs> yeah, that's how people kind of swallowing that pill and be like, shit, man. Like... In 2013, you were closer to 2004 than you are right now looking back at 2013. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, that's that's crazy. Now, for someone who grew up during that time, that blows my mind. I can't imagine how that feels for, like, you know, someone who actually experienced it. Um, yeah, 2013, that really... I mean, because that was also... Like, for me, 2004, there was no social media, really. 2007 there was Facebook and like kind of Twitter but like I wasn't live tweeting like I think I got my Twitter in 2000 like I had a sock space Twitter in 2007 but I didn't have a Jared Carabas Twitter until 2009 uh so like 13 was the first like Twitter experience for a championship so it still feels very recent to me and like the marathon bombing still feels very recent to me like i remember where i was like i remember who i was like texting to make sure that they were okay like i remember all these conversations uh i was working at sully's brand at the time and we had like the believe in boston t-shirts with like the the boston strong like ribbon on them and i was working like fucking 12 hour days to fulfill all the orders we got 
millions of, not millions, but like tens of thousands of orders for a t-shirt company that at the time was just me, Frank, Lauren, like Frank was basically my boss, but Chris was the owner. So like Chris got into the mix and it was me and Lauren were like the mail order people and Frank was calling the shots and like it was us four. And so Sully's is also, it's like half Sully's, half Bridge Nine, which is um, a record label. And they were having people from Bridge Nine come over to help with all the fucking orders. And because it was for what like like the proceeds were going towards the one fund. So it's not like anyone was complaining about the hours, but it was all hands on deck and everyone was just like, yeah, let's get these fucking T-shirts out because we know what the money's going towards. And yeah, that feels very, very recent. Like when you uh, when you go back and watch <clears throat> the. um this is our fucking city speech. I was at the game and I was wearing one of the t-shirts and they zoomed in on it because it was so soon after the bombing happened. No one had them yet. But I had one because I was where they fucking printed them. So I wore it to the game and they showed it and then it ended up in like the newspapers and then bam, next thing you know, there's fucking like 30,000 orders in the first 48 hours and we're like, oh fuck, like how, how are we going to get all these orders out? Uh, but yeah, like that, that season, being there at that game, seeing like the the Poppy speech, the Daniel Nava home run, and I guess like it's still very my life in general is very surreal to me, and I I, I think I've kind of just like my mom said this to me the other day. She's like, I I hope that you still get excited and like nervous for things and that like it doesn't feel normal to you. Like I don't like it's good that you're comfortable and confident in your job. But I hope that like some of the things that you get to experience never feels normal to you. And being where I was in my life in 2013, like that was like the first year that I wasn't really blogging. Like I just didn't because I 2012 sucked so much. I was miserable and I was like, fuck this. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. So I was just enjoying 2013 as a fan that like wasn't like I was like tweeting, but I wasn't like blogging. Like I wasn't like working towards it as a job anymore. So there was no like pressure to have a take or to put myself out there. I just got to enjoy it. And obviously watched every single game. And that season was obviously very special because of the bombing and then winning the World Series. And I guess I, I never really took a second to look back and appreciate what 10 years later, like fucking Will Middlebrooks was the third baseman for that team. He was at my house for my fucking WrestleMania watch party the uh, like a couple weekends ago. Like Will Middlebrooks is just hanging out at my house. He was on the fucking team. He was the third baseman at the fucking obstruction play and whatever that was. Game two. Uh, David Ortiz. We were just sitting with him the other yeah, day. I was about to say, like, like you guys are boys like Xander Bogarts. Dude, Xander Bogarts in 2013 was a young prospect that, you know, we were hoping make, you know, would make it happen here. And he had his moments in the playoffs. But yeah. look at Xander Bogarts today. Like yeah. he's got in the bag. He's viewed as one of the best shortstops. He is one of the greatest shortstops in Red Sox history. Like. That's everything that's played out in front of us. Yes. Like Johnny Gomes. He's he's be- like, I have a fucking f- I have a voicemail from him on my phone. Like he I don't even know if I can I can play. It's a very funny <laughs> voicemail. Uh, like we went so far. We had Ben Charrington as our GM, and now we've somehow gone all the way through the cycle and we have, you know, the analytics nerdy type and I'm bloom back. Let me play this. If. If I have to, if we have to edit, I don't think there's anything bad on this voicemail, but this is like, this is an example. Yeah. Happy Monday. Figured what a great opportunity for you to start your Monday off. I talked to a two time world champ, but (laughs) we got baseball players buying golf courses um, on a a lighter note. Uh, Give me a shot when you get this. Uh, I'm a generation ahead of you. So we actually call people. We don't text people or tweet people. Um, could be a foreign deal for you, but uh, give it a shot. But push the green button, too. <laughs> dude. dude. You want to start your Monday with talking to a two time champ? <laughs> that was in my head, like you know, when you don't know famous people or players, like you picture in your head what they're like. That's exactly what I would have had in my mind. That makes me really happy, actually. Yeah, yeah. Johnny Gomes is Johnny Gomes, and uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. Like Mike Napoli, I've still, I've still never told the the Mike Napoli story. The Mike Napoli night story. It's not really a Mike Napoli story. It's more of like a Mike Napoli night story. And this happened in 2015. So I've just been sitting on it because I, I've been waiting for him to come on the podcast to like tell a story. 
And <laughs> it's crazy. It's, it's one of the like it's one of the more like what the fuck is my life stories that I have. And at this point, that was what, eight years ago. Dude was on the fucking World Series team. I've I don't really I, I haven't I haven't really met I, I met John Lackey in a parking lot in Texas in 2011, but like that was it. Um Ellsbury. I met him at Dustin Pedroia's retirement party. That's the other. I was at Dustin Pedroia's fucking retirement party. Like, what is that? That, yeah, that, that's the, that tells you everything, though. That really is like you are now part of the staple of Red Sox culture, history, all of it. The era. It's that's really crazy. the era. That's crazy. Like, it was what, 2021, his retirement party? Yep. Or was it last year? The or, year no, it was. La- was it last year now? It might have been. Uh, Why do I feel like we got the retirement? I can't. I don't know. I'm looking it up. Actually, it was. It, I think it was 21 because we had him on Section 10. It wasn't name redacted. Yeah. Pedroia announced his retirement February 1st so, of 2021. So, yeah, he would have done yeah, it yeah. that year. Yeah, yeah. But that was another one. It was just fucking wild. Wild. I, I think I thought of the player you were going to say that wasn't there. Who? Daniel Nava. Yeah, what's up with that? I, I would have thought as one, you know, Boston, this is for you, Don Orsillo. Yeah. Like, that would have been a crazy moment. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know where Daniel Nava was. That was something is that kind of... Is he still trying to play, maybe? Or is, I, I think, I think so. like, I think he's coaching somewhere. I, I believe that's what it is. I think he's working... Um, I don't know if it's in a front office, but he was doing some kind of coaching gig. Yeah. Oh, he's a minor league manager for the Dodgers. Okay. So that explains why he wasn't there. Mm-hmm. You had someone yeah. else that didn't make it. Yeah. Should there be? I I thought you had one to name. Well, Stephen was Drew it? was there, right? Yeah. Stephen Drew was see. there. I mean, obviously Bogarts. David Ross wasn't there. Like the obvious ones. Um, Lackey Lester. Oh, Buckholtz wasn't there. Oh, that's yeah. That's who it is. Clay wasn't there. Why? I, it's not like he has shit to do. Wow, that is a yeah. weird one. Yeah, why wasn't Clay there? May, I mean, I, he, he. I don't know, man. Listen, I, before that injury, when he was holding his child, yes, uh, dude, he should have started the All Star game that year easily. Like he was the leading Cy Young contender. And, yes, you know, in the playoffs when he had nothing, he went out there and gave you something. Yeah, and it, like I always, uh, I give credit to Clay for that. You're throwing 88, 89, and getting outs. It's better than nothing when they needed you. Yeah. I think Andrew Bailey is the pitching coach for the Giants, I believe. Yes. <laughs> no Joel Hanrahan. <laughs> Damn. That's a rough one. Thank you for Brock Holt. Yeah. Brock Holt. Uh, someone, someone messaged me earlier today who was uh, along the marathon line today. And he said... Uh, just made Brock Holt die laughing on mile 24 by saying Jared Carabas finished the marathon an hour ago. Thought you should know. <laughs> okay. I, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to roast the, him or Ryan Dempster. Credit to both of them. They both did something I could never do and I'd mm-hmm. actually die. But I'm yeah. pretty sure Ryan Dempster had all better times than Brock Holt and that caught me off guard. Like if I were to tell you in your head, like, oh, you know, Brock Holt, Ryan Dempster, who would finish the marathon quicker? You'd pick Brock Holt, wouldn't you? I would, but Brock has also been injured for a while. Interesting. So that's that would make sense then. That could explain it. And like, again, no offense to Ryan Dempster, but I think Brock stopped multiple times along the line for people that were like, Brock! And like, he would just run over. Yeah, he was like, if you look at his Instagram, he was like stopping to like pose for like videos and he probably stopped and took pictures with people as he was going. I, I don't think that Brock was looking to, to set any records with his time or anything. Uh, I'm just, I was very impressed with Ryan Dempster. I, I, he was running basically everything besides, or no, I think every mile he was running basically under 10 minutes or under 11 minutes. It was like that's nine insane. to 10 minutes. Like Ryan that's Dempster, insane. dude. Good Ryan Dempster. You. That's like one of the best stories about that world series was that, um, after the Red Sox won the World Series in 2013, he if any fans were still remaining, he like brought them on the field and was throwing batting practice to them. 
God. So I had, that was my first year like doing TV hits. So I was doing TV hits before every uh, World Series game outside of Fenway. And then the morning after they won, I was at the clincher with my mom. And then uh, the morning after I had another hit with NECN and we did it inside. So I got a picture in front of the green monster. It still had the final score on it from the night before. Someone stole one of the number plates out of it. Uh, and there was it looked like it looked like a frat party. There were still beer cans everywhere in the grass. So if, if I go through one of my old cell phones, like I definitely have pictures like on the field, like in the batter's box in front of the green monster, like beer cans, like on home plate and shit. Uh, that was very cool. But. Yeah, what a year, what a year that was the um, I've definitely told this story before, but the. The parade started inside Fenway, so they had like a crowd of people inside Fenway. Everyone, all the players got on the duck boats inside Fenway. Then they went through the center field gate and then they did the parade. And I was with my friend Richie. And because I was doing the NECN hits, um, so like all the players got on the boats and then they went out through the gates. And he, he was like, where do you want to go for the parade? And I was like, just wait a second. And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, just, just wait. So... I walked down to like talk to some of like the NECN people and I was like, hey, remember me? You know, I've been doing the thing. <laughs> like, what's going on? So I'm just like chatting them up, trying to extend the conversation as fans are filtering out. And then finally, like everyone is out. And I was like, just act like you belong. And eventually they shut down Fenway so no one else could get in. And we were just left inside there. We had the we had the ballpark to ourselves. And um we start seeing like friends and family of the team were in the park waiting for the players to come back once the parade was over. So we're just looking around and we're like, there's no one here to like stop us from doing anything. So we just walk out onto the field and like stood on the mound, stood in the batter's box. We're walking around the bases. I have a picture of me doing fucking snow angels in center field and like I have a picture in the Red Sox bullpen, like posing like the bullpen cop. <laughs> like, we literally just had the entire fucking like Fenway to ourselves with like maybe a handful of friends and family for the players. Um, no one said anything to us. No one asked who we were or like who we belong to. And then when the players came back, um, <laughs> uh, that's when people were like, wait, who are you guys? Oh, no. And, and then we were like, we just... Well, I mean, Richie didn't really know anyone besides the stars on the team. So I just picked the most obscure player. I was like, we're cousins of Matt Thornton. And they're like, oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> like, All right. So I have Matt like a bunch Thornton. of pictures with like the players and and like, yeah. So we just like took wow. pictures of people as they came off the boat. We're like, yeah, fucking Maddie. It's our boy. <laughs> Th that is one of the smartest, fast, like thinking decisions I think I've ever heard. Who would yeah. ever lie about being Matt Thornton's cousin? Us. nobody yeah so we like i went to the 2004 parade i went to the 2007 parade <clears throat> was in the 18 parade and then the 13 <laughs> parade i didn't actually go to because i talked my way into being inside fenway park and had the entire park to myself it was a magical day i still have i still have like the pictures of me in like the bullpen and like doing snow angels in center field and shit it was awesome <laughs> I think the 2013 parade is the first one that I actually remember. I went to 07, but I was, you know, I was nine or 10. And I just remember like I was like crawling through people's like legs to get yeah. to like the front and hold up on top. Yeah. But 2013. Yeah, I went with a couple of my boys, Puff, Brian, their dad. Um, man, that was an emotional one. I, I just I remember people were like visibly emotional, like during yeah. that parade, like you saw what it meant to people. Yeah. And it was also the first time that I saw like very, very drunk people. Like, like <laughs> extremely drunk people. Um, yeah. And some dude puked right next to me and it, it got on one of my friend's shoes a little bit. Yeah, that happened to me at a Celtics parade or the Celtics parade. Uh, but yeah, no, those are good times. Jake, did you go to any of the two, 2013 playoff games? Um, I don't think I went to a playoff game, but I was definitely at the parade. Where did you post up for the parade? 
I feel like I was bouncing around. Like I went there with some of my friends from high school. I was like 15 at the time. And yeah, once we got there, I feel like it was just chaos the whole time. So I can't really pinpoint a spot. Yeah. I, I will say 2013, I went to, you know, probably 10 or 12 games that year. And I had some very good luck at the games I went to. Uh, I was at the Will Myers doubleheader that Johnny Gomes had the walk off. Mm hmm. And then I was at the Daniel Nava walk off against the Mariners when they were down like what six or five runs or whatever it was. Yeah, I hit both of those. And since I've gone to Red Sox games after, I don't think I've been to a walk off or anything like that since. Those are good times. The parade stopped at the the marathon finish line, which was very cool. That's when they put the trophy down on the marathon, put the the six one seven like Boston Strong jersey over it. Legit yeah. fueled our City Connect jerseys, which the Red Sox play their best in these till this day. What is their record? 17 and four in those things? I believe so. 17 and four. Wear them all the time. That's crazy. It unlocks something. I don't know what it is. It just gets the vibes in the right place. Yeah. Something about something about defending the city's honor just gets the boys going. That's what they need, apparently. Yeah. They also need Xfinity 10G network. Tell me more. Because there's so much basketball to watch right now. It's crazy. And like a ball with a funky spin, it can be hard to get a handle on it all. Now you can stay on top of all the madness with the Xfinity 10G network. With Xfinity 10G, you can power an entire house full of devices with ultra low lag. So you and everyone that you know can stream every single game at the same time and never miss a shot. And if you're on the go, Xfinity will still be right there with the assist with millions of Wi-Fi hotspots. Introducing the next generation 10G network only from Xfinity. The future starts now. Learn more at Xfinity.com slash 10G. Let's go Louisville. <laughs> you know what time it is? What time? The Clark's Ketchup Series MVP brought to you by Clark's Ketchup. Drizzle that ketchup. This is the second Clark's Ketchup Series MVP that we have been uh, <clears throat> fortunate enough to have a theme song for. Three out of four against the Angels. Last time was a three-game sweep of the Detroit Tigers. Uh, this one, <clears throat> I mean, both series, you're talking about three wins, which means there's a heavy pool. Dude, you win it, two out of three in a best in a, not, you win two out of three in a three game series. There may not be a ton of candidates, but you win three out of four. That's the same thing as a sweep. So all, all I'm saying is if we were sitting here when we recorded the last podcast and how depressed we were, if we said we just took three out of four from the Angels, you'd be doing friggin backflips. Yeah. So look at it that way. I know today sucks, but man, you would be crying tears of joy to know that you took three out of four from the Angels. Definitely. And there's people like Maz was someone who was, oh, cares the Angels. They suck. Dude, if I asked you before the series who was the better team, the Angels or the Red Sox, majority of people are picking the Angels just based off that roster alone. Yeah, spare me. I, Thank I think, you. yeah, if I'm, I'm ecstatic and in the, especially the order that they did it in because you win those first three, then you can sit there knowing like, hey, this is Brian Bayo's season debut. You're going up against Otani. You're playing with house money at that point. If you win, great. If you don't, you still won the series and you got to watch Shohei Otani pitch at Fenway Park. So I didn't have a ton of complaints other than they should have won the fucking game. But that's neither here nor there. Um, in this series, Alex Verdugo played in all four games, hit 417 
with a 950 OPS and a 533 on base percentage. He walked in 20% of his plate appearances. Um, he also, did he steal a base? He stole a couple bases? Stole his first base of the season. And just to tell you, last year he had one stolen base throughout the whole year. So there Verdugo go. looks athletic again. There you go. Uh, the 417 batting average leads the Red Sox for that series. The 533 on base percentage also leads the Red Sox for that series. Uh, and his OPS third, which means that there are other candidates to be discussed. Um, Justin Turner played in all four games in this series. 15 plate appearances. 308 batting average, 400 on base percentage, a 615 slug had his first Red Sox home run, which directly resulted in a victory. Two run home run on Sunday. Yes. In a two to one victory, a 1015 OPS in the series. That leads the team. Justin Turner leading the team. Then another candidate here, Rafael Devers. Hit 250 in the series, 294 on base, slugged 688. Slugging percentage leads the Red Sox in this series. Had a 982 OPS. That is good for second best. And if I'm reading this correctly, did not strike out once in this series? I don't think so. Now that you mention it. Yeah, I don't I don't remember a strikeout in this series. I'm looking he right here. He did not no, strike none. out once in this series. Hmm. Hmm. Something to consider. And I will say, you want to throw another thing? Devers defense at third base, put some respect on it. It looks really yeah. good. Mm-hmm. Uh another candidate. Connor Wong. Connor Wong hit 286 in the series. Throwing guys out. Throwing guys out. 500 on base percentage. A 429 slug. Good for a 929 OPS in the series. Uh, The leader, Alex Verdugo, had five hits. But guess who else had five hits? Kike Hernandez. Hernandez had five hits. So they're tied for the most hits on the team. Um, no one had more than one double. Turner, Kike, Rob Ref Snyder, Rafael Devers, Connor Wong, Tristan Casas. Um, Devers hit two homers in the series. Turner hit one. Yu Chang has to be mentioned. Oh, how team. did we not mention Yu Chang? Oh, we the, just did? That two-run homer for his first hit of the year and then the two-run mm. single. Props to him. I, I shit all over him last episode. I think it was deserved. Based yeah. on how he played, but Yu Chang showed up. It goes yeah, to show what happens when those guys give you something. Yeah. Because put it this way Rafael Devers led the Red Sox with four RBI in this series. Yu Chang had four RBI in the series as well. Hmm. Devers leading the team with three extra base hits, Turner with two. Devers, 11 total bases. Turner with eight. Kike this is hard. This is hard. Like, there's no one clear cut. How do we feel about giving it to a starting pitcher? Is that you lame? Give it to Whitlock? I thought I, I considered it. I'm not saying I'm in that camp, but it felt like for you know, a Red Sox starter that hadn't pitched into the sixth, in, sixth inning, he gave you seven. He kind of, you know, I guess you could flip it both ways. Turner won you the game, but so did Garrett Whitlock. You got your best start of the season, saved the bullpen when it needed some help or at least some reinforcements a little bit by eating innings, but it's this only one tough. game. This is tough. I'm going to, I'm going to call Coley. Okay. Because you can also like, you can make a case for fucking Yu Chang. Like if Yu Chang doesn't go off, this is a split. And then there is no MVP. I put him in the Whitlock conversation with me. Really impacted one game in a big way. Yeah. Yep. Please, Coley. Please, Coley. Come on, Coley. I think he's traveling somewhere, too. I don't know where he could be. That means he's in the car. Could be. Come on, Coley. 
This is brutal. Your call has been... Wow! That hurt. It really does hurt. You don't have like a special line like for emergencies? I should. Not a good look. Well, I mean, ultimately, we still have three people here. Who's going first? You are. Who's your vote? Oh, sorry. We, I missed that last part. Um, I think I'm going to give it to Devers. He hit two homers in the series. I've been really impressed overall with the defense at third base. Those homers in the first two games went a long way towards keeping you in those games, uh, especially you know when it felt like they could get away from you. And in the ninth inning today, showed up. Say what you will. He didn't walk it off for you, but a big single through the right side to get you one run out or one run down. I'll give credit to Devers. I think he continues to be the heartbeat and really the the enforcer of this offense. 11 total bases for Devers did not strike out once. Only walked once. Um, but Verdugo, man. He's been unreal. Like It's hard not to. Coley said, I'll call you back in a minute. I'm putting the kids to bed. Just think, Nick Pavetta got taken for that grand slam. It's like, oh, here we go. Devers comes out. Hits a homer in the bottom of the first. You're like, all right, the Red Sox have a chance in this game. Yeah. Gives you the lead, you know, against the Angels when it was 2-2. Made it 3-2 on that shot by the pesky pole. Yeah. I considered Verdugo five hits, but they're all singles. I played a great right field as well. Yeah. Walked three times as well. Wow, this one's hard. And he gave you, you know, we said Devers giving you the run. He started the rally in the ninth in a pinch hit or in a pinch hit opportunity. He did. A bullet. Mm hmm. But I think you should lose some points because he didn't play the whole game. You're right. And I do the same thing to Justin Turner, unfortunately. Mm hmm. Even though if he had hit that two run shot, we're having a very different conversation. This one's hard because, like, Justin Turner. Won a baseball game. He was the and offense. Yu, Yu Chang won a baseball game. Devers played all four games and had the most damage. We can't say much for Yu Chang in the other games. He didn't even play in all four. Yeah. That's Devers part of the equation as four. well. Yeah. Turner played in all four, but didn't start today. Hmm. This is tough. Because I think, I, I think the correct answer is Devers. Uh, it, if you're looking for the most consistent pick, I think it'll be Devers. The guy who gave you the most over the four games. And I keep going back to the fact that he didn't strike out. It says something. He, he's locked in at the plate, but I'd also go and say, all right, could Cutter Crawford deserve some consideration? No, they fucking lost. Okay, that's fair. I'll give him a packet, though. Yeah, he gets a packet. I'll give Kenley a packet. Kenley Kenley gets two saves. Yeah, two saves. Kenley Jansen. Big spots. Huge. Do you give a packet to Ryan Brazier? Yeah, I'll give give one to him. I'll give one to Caleb Ort. Thank you. I I think Caleb Ort could deserve a packet. He got you out of the eighth inning and just allowing one run after Pavetta left him a mess. You get a packet for that. We'll take it. Wasn't his run either. We will take it. Oh, Winkowski. Here's a packet. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, now you're just giving them away. Oh, spare me. Spare me. Fuck off. <laughs> this is going to feel like I'm waiting for Coley to... to I, I at least want to hear Coley's case. Well, but he's going to bro- say like the most random... Wa- yeah. like He's going like, to say Rob Ref Snyder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who shout out to Rob. That 3-0 count getting struck out in the ninth inning was rough, but still mashing lefties. And unfairly having to hit in the middle of the lineup. Yeah. Jake? <sighs> Jake, who do you got? I want to give it to Yu Chang so bad. I think <laughs> if it was a three-game series, maybe that would have made more yeah. sense. But mm. I don't know. Devers just consistently through four games, I feel like it's hard to knock out him. Yeah. If, if this were a three-game series... And they took two out of three, and one of them was the Chang game. It 
I think I would lean more towards you, Chang. This is going to be tough. I think Coley's going to pick Wetlock. You think so? Yep. I think he could pick Kenley, honestly. Kenley deserves uh, That's a good one. I think he goes Kenley. If I know my guy Coley, he's probably going Kenley Jansen here. So is that you locking in, or do you not feel safe making a pick until you no, can I, hear, hear I'm leaning, Coley's feedback? Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning Devers. But I'm leaning Devers for the overall productivity, but I just like the Clark's ketchup MVP is more than is more than that. <laughs> it's it's like There's intangibles. You know, it's it's like who directly resulted in wins. And Justin Turner directly resulted in a win. Yu Chang direct, d- directly resulted in a win. And then you have Kenley Jansen saving two games. But then a guy like Gary Whitlock. I can't feel right picking Gary Whitlock. It feels wrong. It feels unfair. Um, Is the moment, what's the moment of the series? Uh, Jake, send Coley the link, he said. Whoa. Yeah, he... He wants in. Come on, Coley. See, now he, he's definitely going to say Kenley. I could feel it. Mm-hmm. <sighs> this, is, this is a big one. We gave it to Devers last time, so this would be both of our... Wait, did no, we didn't De- give it to Duvall last time, did we? The first one? First one the was first Duvall, one was Devers Duvall. was two. Yeah. Okay. Is this only the, this is the third series that they've won, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yep. I just want to hear the thought process. While Coley's coming, six man rotation for the next week. Do you like that or do you not like that? If Cora likes it, I like it. That's my manager. I don't question him. Oh, staying in. Oh, sorry. Um, they cut out weirdly there. But yeah, they're going to keep Tanner Houck in there through at least one more turn. Does that make you worried based on where the bullpen is? Because they're going to be down an arm. Um, seven relievers now. Yeah, seven relievers, but you've got guys that can give you multiple innings. Like you don't have seven one inning guys. But realistically, Cutter's out the next week. He's out five days. He just yeah, made a start. I just made a start. Thank you for acknowledging that. Shut up. Thank you. Thank you for finally admitting the truth. So you got six relievers for the next couple of days. I mean, yeah, next turn. Yeah. Not what you want. Makes me nervous. Don't be nervous. I need Tanner Houck in the bullpen. Not don't that I there. don't think he could get by, but knowing I could say, all right, I can put Schreiber in the eighth. I can go ninth inning Kenley and I can say Tanner Houck on the, in the seventh would make me feel like I have some breathing room. Hmm. Hmm. Where the fuck's Coley? Did you send it to him, Jake? Yeah, it should be good to go. Okay. I think he'll buy in on the dolphin people. No, I don't think so. Is that just your gut or is that you knowing your guy? Uh... I think I think Coley's out on dolphin people. I don't think he believes in it. Kind of fucked up. Well, you can take that up with him. Did Otani give you any hope that he'd be in a Boston Red Sox uniform? Not after they just let him drown out there. <laughs> he looks so miserable. Like, why would you do that to your guy? I will say the fan interaction like after games, I guess maybe I haven't seen it or I'm stupid and I don't, you know, when he travels, dude, he was living a rock star lifestyle. Like the amount of people that were lined outside at the Angels bus just to see him and say like, oh, we love you, Shohei. Dude, I mean, like there's, there's a gift going around of him signing a ball for a kid today. Like, and you see the kid, it looks like the most magical moment of his entire life. 
like dancing up and down, like squeezing his hat. And Otani's just like peacefully signing the ball for him. I mean, Shohei, Shohei is basically Paul McCartney in the 60s. But better. But better. Because he's not part of a band. He's a one man band. He's like two bands. Yeah. Like the, the Angels are not the Beatles. No. They are not. But Shohei, he's Paul McCartney. I know Otani doesn't want to come here because probably it's cold first off. I know he wants to be on the West Coast. But then you have the Dodgers who are under the luxury tax just so they can go after him. And then Steve Cohen will give him whatever he wants. But I still think that he'll go to the Dodgers anyway. Yeah. Well, it's Hey, do you want to enjoy the same weather and all the same perks except you're not on a poverty franchise? Yeah. And you get to play with Mookie Betts. But imagine playing with Yoshida. Yeah. Fuck you. What? I like Yoshida. Uh, last time I checked, Otani looks at Yoshida in a very special way. He does? You haven't seen the pictures of Shohei and Yoshida at the WBC? Yeah. They, they were smiling like Otani was giving him that look. Mm-hmm. I want to be friends look. I mean, <laughs> like, Otani's probably going to tell Yoshida to request a trade to the Dodgers. All right, now stop it. I'm just saying. <laughs> Went from dream to nightmare. No, that's fine. That's fine. Cole? Otani, Boston, 2024. No. Speak it into existence. You think the Red Sox are going to pay Shohei Otani $50 million? No, <laughs> but I, I like to dream. They're going to get under the luxury tax just so they can... I bet they take a meeting. I bet they take a meeting with Otani. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He'll meet with them. There'll be a fucking business pat meeting. There's nothing getting done. Did you see that he was demanding comments to release a video of him in Miami? He want didn't he want like 200 comments? And there was one kid who actually was like trying to make it happen. It probably has like 19 comments. No, this kid made like 80 comments himself. Otherwise, there was maybe four. I feel like that's cheating. I agree, but it should be 200 uniques. How many comments is it up to you right now? Well, I'll check right now. Hold on. Where is he? Um, did he delete it? That's embarrassing if he did. Oh, no. Did he delete it? No, it's oh, on here his we go. podcast it's account. A- oh, no. Yeah, this didn't do well. There's a lot of <laughs> Yeah, there's maybe three comments outside of this one kid who he went deep with it. He he worked hard. I'm seeing as high as 40. And that's with that's with one person doing 37 of them. We're probably talking 50 total. With someone doing like 40. I'm worried about him. Oh, 63. I got the exact number. All right. So he's almost halfway there. Oh, and then they tagged us, you and the podcast, and said, you and the name redacted pod boys need to see this video. Which nobody responded to. I mean, I hand up didn't see that. But Pat, I love you. Even if I did. Like, what am I? What am I supposed to do? Retweet it. Tell people to comment that defeats the purpose. I kind of do want to see the Miami video, though. Yeah, but you can't you can't abandon the show and then be like, hey, promote my show so that I can release this silly video of me doing business. Did you business. see this, Coley? We're doing a business. Pat, Pat, like put out a tweet from his podcast and was like, oh, if this gets 200 comments, we'll release the fucking Pat Light Miami video. You guys have to see this. And then he tagged us to be like, hey, retweet it so that your people leave 200 comments. You abandon us. That's business. That I mean, that's a poor Whoa. business move. That's a poor. That's won't, a- don't you think it's poor business to, to be like, hey, I, I, I'm not going to be on your show, but I will use your audience. Yeah. <laughs> that's just a bad business. Listen, he went to Miami. I mean, I know you want. Do you imagine if that doesn't get 200? We, we, we all want the what video. Happened. We never know what happened to Pat in Miami. 
I'm gonna hey, I'm anything. gonna throw a guess out there. I bet he got drunk. No. Old take. No, I think I think there's a good chance that he he probably got drunk and was ah this is so crazy. Let's let's set the over under uh, helicopters taken at two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> over hammer it. All right, uh, we are on the Clark's Ketchup series. Do you want to play the song again? <laughs> Please. <laughs> what are you doing, Coley? <laughs> what? I have to play it? No, no, no. I asked you. I was like, do you want me to play the song again? Oh, I heard do it, and I just assumed the song was going to start playing. Oh, no, 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 no. I asked you if you wanted me to, because you didn't get to hear it. I, it's all I ever hear now. Right. It's, it's all that echoes <laughs> in my head. Yeah. There are no more thoughts. Just right. the clock sketch up MVP theme song. And it's a great song. Um, we we've got a dilemma here because there's a lot of there's a lot of packets being thrown around. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of strong candidates. Do you want to hear the uh-huh. numbers? Um, no. Okay, I I feel like I know who you're gonna go with. <laughs> who do you think I'm gonna go with? I, well, the listening audience knows, so I can't lie. So if you just I don't want you to change your mind because you want me to be wrong. What do you what do you mean the listening audience knows? I've already said on like we're <laughs> we both we're predicted. like two hours into this podcast. Like I've predicted who you're gonna say. So people listening already know who I think you're gonna say. Okay. Well, for full transparency, for two of these games, I was in Atlanta. Okay. For two of these games? What was yet yesterday I watched. Today I, I was re- working so i didn't really watch doesn't sound like i missed much no um i feel like turner finally did things mm-hmm. i do respect i appreciate turner finally doing things mm-hmm. I, I i tweeted out a challenge to justin turner the do something challenge he responded a lot of guys <laughs> don't yeah. a lot of guys don't respond uh-huh. uh i still like did Devers homer like twice this series? Did not strike out once either. Oh, yeah, it's him by a lot then. Okay. All right. That's well, not, wait, does wait, anyone, wait. On, the, does anyone <laughs> on the team deserve it like ever, honestly? I mean, Devers led the team in total bases, slugging percentage, uh, obviously home runs. I believe RBI. Yeah, he tied with I Yu would Chang. So. Yeah, he tied with Yu Chang. I mean, he only had four hits the whole series. Two of them are homers, though. Uh, and he did not strike out once this series. I Pretty thought good. you were going to vote for Kenley Jansen for getting two saves. Uh, no. No, no, no. What about Whitlock, Coley? Whitlock was the guy who crossed my mind. Uh, and Yu Chang, obviously. But Whitlock, I mean, we've seen the rest of these starters going going seven for these Red Sox. He went seven, right? Seven. Yep. Yeah, going seven. I mean, that's unbelievable. We've been looking for, and it's like these aren't the worst Angels we've seen in recent history. They're bad. They're they're bad because they're the Angels, but they're not the worst Angels of of we've seen. Rendon's they're on the same like, tier. <clears throat> Rendon cares right now, which is very rare. So that makes them way better than last year. Um. Whitlock did something Bat Light did, which is strike out Mike Trout. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Whitlock going seven, especially like so many people don't want him to start. So him doing it against anyone is impressive at this stage of his comeback. Um, I feel like Bayo was really going to settle in until, <laughs> until the rain delay and the, the runs. Uh, but, you know, we're OK. We're OK with that. But yeah, Whitlock would have been two. Didn't Brazier get a save this series? Yeah, he did. He did and he struck out Mike Trout. Yeah. So I don't know if that so takes how, away from Pat, but. I was going to say, how fucking hard are either of those things if we're talking <laughs> about giving it to Kenley or striking out Mike Trout? You know? I think if, if, if Ryan Brazier and Pat Light are on the list of guys to strike out Mike Trout. <laughs> Like it, it kind of diminishes the world baseball classic, if we're being honest. <laughs> it really does take away from that moment, doesn't it? It's super easy. 
<laughs> it can't be that hard. It just can't be. Um, you know who right. my sneaky MVP was for this series? Uh, You'll, it's not a player. Oh, um, the rain. No, 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 no. That would have been the sneaky. If 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 that's the only thing that could knock Shohei out of the game was the fucking rain. Player no, on the was, Red Sox or non-player in necess- general? Not necessarily. No. Hmm. I don't know who. I don't know. The Japanese media made a spectacle of this weekend. That's what to I the said point too. where it seemed like quite quite a shit. Like I. I understand why the 2013 team was here this weekend. They could have picked any weekend realistically, but to have Koji here get uh, basically a standing ovation, uh, have David Ortiz uh, throw him on his shoulders and carry him around, be celebrated like a hero, to have uh, Yoshida and, and Shohei like greeting in the outfield and have that be a spectacle in and of itself. I I I, th- I feel like that. That was uh, the smart choice. That was a good idea. Mm-hmm. It was a big deal. I just, I wish, I wish that matchup meant more when we got it. Like, it's kind of hard to get gassed up when Yoshida's hitting like a buck sixty. <clears throat> it's been a rough day. Why is your internet so bad? What? What you, you didn't because, realize? Because I no, I didn't. Uh, because I'm in I'm in the new studio and it's like fucking brick walls and shit. Like we're we're getting Ethernet to like hardwire, but for right now, like I had to move in here preemptively because the, the I was getting worked on in the bathroom and he was banging the shit out of all the tiles, and I had to go in here because it's like soundproof, but it's also internet proof too. <laughs> sure is. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um. Anyways, all right. Uh, Clark's Ketchup Series MVP voting time. Uh, the, I'm I'm going Rafael Devers. I stand with Devers. <sighs> That's two. Coley. Why did did you say so confidently? I was going to say Kenley Jansen. Because your your pick is always like outside the box. Like it's like it's never who you would think it would be. Like Devers had the best numbers. He was the most consistent. But like Yu Chang directly won a game. Justin Turner directly won a game. Garrett Whitlock kind of, sort of directly won a game. So like it wasn't like as clear cut. Like Devers was the best performer consistently throughout. But like Kenley saved two games. So I don't know. I didn't know if that's where you're going to go. No, I mean, I, I, I love having Kenley on the team. He's a good guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like having Devers here more. <laughs> he's better. That's fair. He is definitely better. Yeah. He's definitely better. And that's no disrespect. Devers uh, is better than most people. Yeah. I do want to take some credit here for knowing what Coley was going to pick over Jared. That says something. I don't know what it says or what it means, but Coley, think, when you, you think of me, means? just remember that. What it means is that even though I was wrong, I still know Coley better because I, I thought outside the box, whereas you went with the most obvious answer, and Coley more often than not does not go with the most obvious answer. I, I think you're making it more obvious than it actually is. Like you're you're trying to put it in this category where you know we mentioned Whitlock, but we never seriously considered him. Yeah, I go you almost voted answer. for him. I, I, I thought with- me. That's Tyler Milliken. <laughs> I've I've consistently gone with the correct guy. When I come on this show and you guys are like, ah, oh, it's between Matt Barnes and fucking Trevor Story. I'm like, all right, <laughs> let's let's settle down. <laughs> Jake. <Cool. laughs> I'm sticking with Devers. Okay. So that's four for Devers. That's uh we need a way to celebrate this. We need like, is it claps? Is it, do we play the song a second time to round it out? Let's two time Clark's Ketchup Series MVP back to back. Clark's Ketchup Series MVP, Raphael Devers. Wow. Devers, Devers. That's uh that's not unprecedented, but it's definitely you're in good company if you're 
Back to back Clark Sketchup Series MVP. Congratulations to Rafael Devers. All right, we got to take a break and talk about Zinn nicotine pouches. We're always talking about what a team needs to get to number one, but Zinn nicotine pouches are already there. Zinn has helped millions of people achieve a lasting change, earning the title of America's number one nicotine pouch. If you're a smoker or you're a dipper looking to make a change, look no further than Zinn. Zinn is made with six simple ingredients and is available in a wide range of varieties, including spearmint, citrus, and even coffee. And it's available in two strengths so you can control your nicotine satisfaction. Because it's discreet, you can enjoy it anywhere, anytime, so you never have to miss a moment of the game. Plus, every can of Zinn earns you points towards premium items like tailgating gear, top-of-the-line tech, Zinn swag, even gift cards. Find your Zinn at your local convenience store or online at Zinn.com. That's Zinn, Z-Y-N.com. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Let's stop a chop look ahead. Prati, why are you shaking your head, Coley? Nothing. I'm, I'm, Jen, I wasn't. You were? Not like at anything. Oh, okay. Brought to you by Stop and Shop. Get 10 cents off each of your tangerines if you buy up to five pounds of tangerines at your local stop and shop. Red Sox have the Minnesota Twins coming to town, and boy, do they have a good rotation. They are good. The Minnesota Twins are rolling out Sonny Gray versus Chris Sale, 710 start on Tuesday. Corey Kluber versus Joe Ryan. What time is that game? That's Wednesday? That's 7 be 7 10, yeah. Wednesday, 7 10. Uh, and then I hate it, but it's a Thursday, 135 game. Tanner Houck uh, gets the start against Tyler. What's his? How do you pronounce this? Male, Molly, male, Mal. Tyler Maley. Maley. Tyler Maley. Um, the Red Sox at home this year are four and five with a negative one run differential. They were three and four against the Twins last year with a negative four run differential. Twins are 10 and six to start the year. Twins are 10 and six. And Sonny Gray is the Sonny Gray that Hubs thought that he was getting when he got traded to the Bronx. He's 2 and 0 with an 053 ERA, a one whip, and a 10.1 strikeouts per nine and three starts. 17 innings, 10 hits, one earned run, seven walks, 19 strikeouts. Uh, he's only allowed four extra base hits. They've all been doubles. Um, he's faced two mediocre slash bad teams, White Sox Royals, but he absolutely butt fucked the Astros. Seven innings, four hits, one earned run, 13 strikeouts. The 13 strikeouts, a career high, which is crazy. Uh, Previous career high was 12. Did that in 2021 and 2014. Um, His pitching arsenal is different this year. His sinker four seam were used 54% last year. Uh, This year, they're used 31%. His two most frequently used pitches this year, the curve, 27% and slider, 18%. Hitters combined four for 30 with 14 strikeouts against those two pitches. His slider, 59% whiff rate this year. He only throws it to righties. Uh, He faced the Red Sox once last year, got hurt in the second inning. The Twins are 3-0 in his starts this year. Um, Red Sox hitters, 244, 279, 610. That's an 889 OPS, three doubles, four homers. Those home runs belong to Rafael Devers, Justin Turner, and Alex Verdugo. Joe Ryan, 3-0, and a 284 ERA, an 063 whip, and a 12.3 strikeouts per nine. Uh, strong start coming off a breakout 2022. Had the 355 ERA, 399 FIP, and 27 starts last year. Susceptible to the long ball. He's allowed at least one in each of his starts this year. Also has... Two 10 strikeout games so far this season. Um, this year, only Joe Ryan and Garrett Cole have done that twice. Only throws a four seamer splitter and sweeper. 
throws his splitter and sweeper combined 41% of the time. Hitters are 0 for 21 with seven strikeouts against these two pitches this year. Uh, the fastball does not suck, but tops out at 92 and a half miles an hour. Uh, only a 200 batting average and expected is 158. All three home runs he's allowed have come off the fastball, but the expected slug is 150. Had two starts against the Red Sox last year. That was April 15th, six innings, five hits, one earned run, no walk, seven strikeouts, a homer, and a dub. And he faced them August 31st, five innings, eight hits, five earned runs, one walk, eight strikeouts, two homers for the loss. Uh, Red Sox hitters, 250, 250, 375. One homer. That belongs to Verdugo. Tyler Maley, one and two, 411 ERA, 143 whip, and a 10 point. So even if he sucks, he still has a 10.6 strikeouts per nine. Um, he's a he's a back end of the rotation guy. Pitched well against the Marlins. Allowed four runs. Um to both the Astros and the Yankees. Three home runs allowed in his last two starts. Uh, his fastball fucking stinks. <laughs> 93.4 miles an hour. Opponent batting average, 320. 520 slug. Batters hit 327 and had a 490 slug off his slider last year when he threw it 12% of the time. And then this year, he decided to throw it 30.4% of the time. Twins are one and two in his starts. Red Sox hitters, 296, 326, 386. Uh, four doubles, no walks, and 46 plate appearances. Most of that, unfortunately, is Trevor's story, two for 15. And then you've got Tapia, four for 12, couple doubles. Turner, three for five, couple doubles. So that doesn't sound great, but. Coley's daughter is pissed about this pitching matchup. Mm-hmm. Pissed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she can't. I mean, I'm not too worried. The fucking there's two reds in this ro- like this three man rotation. How worried could I be? Sonny Gray, man. Sonny he's... Gray sucks. I don't give a fuck what he's done everywhere else. He's been nails literally everywhere but New York. So it sucks. Mm-hmm. So what's your prediction? I think two out of three. Joe Ryan's a guy whose name, every time I hear it, I'm like, you shouldn't be anybody. Like, you weren't supposed to make it this far, which means Mm -hmm. he has, like, incredible determination. Because people (laughs) have just read his name his whole life and been like, this is a nobody. Your name is Joe and then Ryan. Mm -hmm. Like, no chance. And here he is. Here he is. (laughs) He's here. He's going to shut us down. You think so? Wednesday, yeah. Okay. And then the other fucking guys. I mean, come on. <laughs> so you have no respect for Sonny Gray. Not when you like when you suck as bad as he sucked for the Yankees. Like that was that was tough. I mean, he basically got bullied out of New York. Oh yeah. Hey man, I mean, there's another guy on this team who got bullied out of New York, Joey Gallo, who has their highest OPS on the team. Mm-hmm. That must be maddening as a Yankee fan to see these guys having success with the Minnesota Twins. I, th- I feel like they'll take that trade. Probably. For how thoroughly oh. they've dominated the Twins. Have you talked to, have, have you addressed nationally the cheating scandal? Uh, Domingo Herman? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's, he's just a bad guy. No doubt. <laughs> he's not a good guy. He cheated. He's done other bad things as well. I was going to say, is that like Yankee policy to keep one of those guys around? Mm -hmm. (laughs) They had him and Chapman for a while. It was like, we can can shed one of them, but not both. Mm -hmm. No facial hair, just abusers. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's it's like the play like a champion today sign at Notre Dame. They've got the no no facial hair, just abusers sign Uh, going down the (laughs) tunnel. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Jake, what do you got in this series? Two out of three. Call these two out of three. What do you got, Jake? I think the Red Sox take all three. You think you're going to sweep? <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking sweep. <laughs> okay. It's <laughs> a good pick. Um, Tyler? First off, how'd I, how'd I have you say Tyler Malley's name? Maley? Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's the first way I just said it, because it apparently rhymes with rally. That's how they have it in the pronunciation. So I'm an idiot. Maley? Malley. 
This uh, guy even, doesn't even get a name. Uh, he can't even speak. <laughs> We're not losing um, to that fucking guy. Um, but the way I look at it, I don't think the Twins offense has been too hot. Uh, they're, what, 24th in runs right now overall. So this is a chance for the pitching staff and the starters to actually go deep into the game. Will they? That's another question. You got Chris Sale in that first game. He could easily implode. But this is finally a stretch where the Red Sox are playing righties. They're away from the lefties. This should kind of help their lineup a little bit and get them right. I think they take two out of three. I think Jaron Duran has a nice series. I like what Ooh. I saw today. Um, and I know I, I might be losing it. I might be a little crazy, but he's going oppo and shooting balls off the monster. He's stealing bags. He's scary in center field. That's never going to change, at least not anytime soon. I think they take two out of three in. The starting pitching kind of flexes a little bit and picks up the bullpen. Okay. But I will say the one loss will be because they run out of arms in the bullpen. Or Chris Sale just gives up eight earned runs. I can't handle that. What, Coley? He'll be real low on sale for. He's been terrible. He's made three starts in a row. He's, he's, he's available. When's the last time you could say that? 2021. No. Oh, yeah. He for sure did not make three starts in a row. He, they I at mean, least gave him an off day in between. No. No. It was 98 was the last time he's done this. <laughs> 98. <laughs> We've got to start celebrating the small things. Yeah. Moral victories. Yeah. Um, like he's like the thing with sale is like he's just locating like absolute dog shit. The stuff looks fine to me. His location is just the worst it's ever been. Yeah. Look but at I feel Brian like that Bayo. comes with reps. Yeah, yeah. Look at Bayo. His command was shit today. He got absolutely smacked. Whitlock's command was shit his first start. Got absolutely smacked. If you can figure out where the ball's going. Yes. Yeah, I'd rather was post. Go ahead. Stats go was ahead. post and Whitlock was throwing his sinker like tits high and it was like yeah people were teeing off on it and against the angels he kept everything knees and down and it was like oh shit yeah he was dominant again like that's i don't think these are huge adjustments sale has to make in bayo that was like his sixth career start so i'm not too worried about it i'm not worried about bayo i'm a little worried about sale but it was only because of the the post-game press conference when he got asked at his locker like hey you know are you seeing why you're so bad like it is is there something you can fix and he was like if if i knew what it was i'd fix it so Shut he didn't even Dave know Bush. yeah like he didn't even know like what's going on like there was maybe the, the last time we heard from chris sale it's not something that they were working on maybe it maybe he's tipping something we need uh pitching coach pedroia on it that's true he was in town so maybe they figure something out yeah. there right mm-hmm mm-hmm um can, can I just ask Coley? Pitches wouldn't be shocking, especially since he's adjusting to the, the shot clock and all that. Yeah. Cole, Go ahead, Tom. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save it. We need to finish. We need to finalize our predictions before I ask this last question because it's a serious question. Jared? I... I am going to go... Mm. I'm I'm between two predictions right now. The indecisiveness with you recently. It, it is not it's not a beautiful thing. Well, cuz I haven't hit on a prediction yet. I'm trying to fucking hit. Happy you admitted that. Clip that as well. <laughs> That's why I'm going sweep, baby. <laughs> Three, Tyler. I want, I want a fucking Red Sox sweep. None of that pussy ass. Two out of three. Oh, Mr. One out of four. Have no balls. One more time. Have no balls. Half in, half out. I think the Red Sox are going to have a fucking, they're going to have a good series, but it's not going to be too good. I don't think it's going to be too good. I only have them winning two out of three. They're going to win all fucking three, Tyler. You know sack having fucking <laughs> moron. Fuck you. Sucks. Soy.
I will say, the last time the Red Sox took three out of four, they were promptly swept. Hey, some, something's got to change. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's, it's going to be this time. So, <laughs> Coley, you know. what do you have on dolphin people? <sighs> well, I mean, they're among us. I think we can all agree. Oh, my God. Yeah. You understand. You know. They're mm-hmm. among us. Mm-hmm. How long till it's only them? Oh man, I mean these things take time, you know. It's not it's not like you can just flip a switch with something like that. Uh but dolphins under themselves are very aggressive. Uh and when you combine them with people, also an aggressive species, it can be an aggressive takeover. So I I still give it some time just because of the sheer numbers, but but soon enough. Jared, Jake, fuck you. You're not on the same plane. You don't get it. I didn't I didn't say anything about dolphin people. You shit on them and looked you at me as if I was not. crazy. He'll better be the not. first one to die. Mm-hmm. The overlords will get you. I mean, death, you'll be cry- screaming for death. That's that's what the dolphin people will have you doing. Well, Echolocation what was, screaming. What was that show that just came out? It was uh, The Rest of Us, The Last of Us, The Last of Us. <laughs> Uh, and I was just saying how like if that ever happened I would just fucking kill myself on like the third day like we would still have like electricity like everything would still be working but just like the idea that it was happening I'd be like see you fucking later and then they would figure out a cure in like a few weeks and everyone would be like alright thank god <laughs> like I'm not what hanging about, around what about recent history suggests they're <laughs> quick to find cures and things like this well the zombie virus would be different than like a like a yeah that'll be easier (laughs) (laughs) i mean but the truth was zombies the truth was zombies that people don't like to talk about if you're one of the first zombies you've got it made in the shade it's when you try and be a fucking tommy tough nuts and outlast them Mm. like the the original people who become zombies, they look fine compared to like the last zombies who just get torn limb from limb and they don't even get to be zombies. Like it's you really want to be one of the first to adapt. Yeah. I think I'd be a cool zombie. Uh, mm What do you mean? I don't I don't I don't know what you wouldn't be leading the pack. You know what I'm saying? Like the what athletics. Do you mean? Well, you wouldn't move as fast as other zombies. The taller zombies Why? would move quicker than you. You're you're, you're short legged. You're short legged. You're the same height no, as me. I'm not. I'm taller than you. You're five <laughs> ten. Shut the fuck up. No, you're not. Oh my god, Jared, I stood <laughs> next to you. I Please stood next to you. Me. Spare me. Spare me. I'm gonna pull up the video right fucking now. Jake's taller than both of us, actually. Jake is sneaky tall. I'm sneaky, same height as you. Jake. Jake wears boots though. Wow. Weren't you wearing what'd you wear at the David <laughs> oh. Ortiz interview? I wore sneakers. <laughs> but nothing in the shoe? No, I didn't I was wearing sneakers. I wasn't wearing boots. Your hair doesn't count. I hope you know that. I'm not trying to count my hair. Yeah, we're the same height. What fucking month was that party in? September. September. Just disclose what your height is, Jared. I'm five eleven. All right. I got a video of me and Tyler right here. Um, this is damning. This is damning. Hold on. Oh no, this is bad. I was leaning over. Nope, you're yeah, standing up know. straight right there. Coley, no. you standing you. up straight right there. You both no. look like you're sitting down. If no, sta- I'm standing up. Tyler is on his tippy toes. <laughs> I felt like I was talking, like I was lowering myself, like you would to a small child when I was speaking to you that night. No, nope. like I leaned over to whisper in your ear. I look taller than you there. Well, you're not. You're not. Show that to Coley. Nope. I, already I got saw it. <laughs> I look taller. <laughs> you were 5'9, Jared Carabas. 5'9, my you ass. You were 5'9. I'm like 5'11. I tower your ass. <laughs> no, you don't. I tower your fucking ass. No, you don't. Nope. Whatever you say, little guy. Oh my God, Tyler. <laughs> I will fucking break a bottle over your head and cut your throat with it. That's all I have to say. I'm about. I made it clear. I made it clear. 
I've even threatened physical violence against Coley in the past. Well, Coley's way taller than either one of us. It's true. <laughs> Coley, short stack Coley. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? That shrimp. <laughs> my fa- my favorite is calling uh, Jared fat on Twitter and people being like, what is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just how you weed out people that listen and people that don't. Mm-hmm. Or people's eyes. Or people, yeah. <laughs> but my favorite is like when someone will pronounce my name wrong. But then be like, love the show. I'm like, no, you don't. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, like, I don't, I don't do, I don't say my name in the intro to this, but in section 10, I say it right in the beginning. How you, there's no way you listen to the podcast if you don't know how to say my name correctly. Or like watch the Red Sox. They just bring you in there every, every few innings to Uh just get the Sox shit pummeled. Yeah. I mean, they gave up a run when Pedroia was in there. I, I wouldn't want to say that. I didn't want to bring that up, but they did also do that for Pedroia. So. They gave up way more when you were in there, though. So no, many no, times. No, 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 no. You're like the Pat Light of broadcasters. Pat Light's handsome. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Also stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude. All right. Is that uh is that it, Jake? I think that's it. Okay. Were people happy winning three out of four? Yeah, I was very happy with that. Five okay, slightly good. a tinker down, but positive. Should have won that game. Should have won the last one. Well, it was fucking raining. That's that's what I said as well. Yeah. They had so. their chances. Mm-hmm. You like my new background, Coley? It's dark. It's bright in front of my face, though. Definitely. You asked about the background. Yeah, do you like it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's nothing to do with the foreground. Yeah, but does it look like a does it look like a like a, a zoom fake background or does it look real? Uh, it looked more real before you started touching it. Now it looks fake? No, when you're touching it, it looks fake. When you're not touching it, it looks real. I don't know really how to describe it. Oh, it's real. But when you, when you touch it, I'm like, that's a green screen. When you're just sitting, I'm like, he painted brick black in this house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that brick wasn't there before. Oh, I know. Now it's there. Big time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, any final thoughts, Tyler? I'm proud of you, Garrett. Uh, Whitlock, not shitlock. It's, he's been calling him shitlock for three months now, and now he wants to jump on the bandwagon of everyone that wanted him in the rotation. Like me. Coley, please don't do this. I'm begging you, don't. <laughs> Do not join in this fake news spreading. <laughs> I have heard the shitlock uh, <laughs> allegations. Oh, and they're not tough. allegations. They're on. They're in on the record. fucking podcast. They're on record, and it's crazy. Um, Jake's takes. Just glad Tyler finally came around. <laughs> yeah, me too. I hate you guys. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Fuck. It was getting uncomfortable for a while. I was like, Garrett Woodlock's never going to want to c- come on the podcast because of this guy. He's going to come on and be like, oh, you're, there's the shitlock guy. There he is. <laughs> Which is a tough thing to be known for in that clubhouse. They love that guy. They oh, love man. Whitlock. He's they would never call him that. Yeah, no. Like, unofficial yep. captain is what I, the rumblings I've been hearing. Mm-hmm. Jimmy they Fun Captain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he is a captain. Oh. So. It's a bad look for me. Mm-hmm. 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 I heard, yeah, you hate the Jimmy Fun? That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah, he did say that presenting sponsor yeah they are they were the first sponsor on today's show and uh tyler tyler just not a fan what what did jake cut this audio out did he just cut out this <laughs> long rant anti jimmy fun rant that i went on you just yeah, cut yeah. it out is that what happened we all heard it <laughs> so <laughs> that's actually that yeah 
It's a whole thing. So. I don't even know who I am anymore. Yeah. Just work. Just find God and work on yourself. Mm. Please. Uh, we'll be back on Thursday, right? Thursday night. No, it's a day game. All right. Yeah. So you might get the podcast on Thursday night. Okay. All right. Enjoy the twin series and we'll see you on Thursday. Buenas noches, amigos.